people. If you want to donate, whatever, that's totally cool. If not, I don't care, y'all. I love it when you guys are just here and hanging out. So uh, that's it. Okay, Bentley. I'm so sorry, my friend. Let's get Bentley on the show. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay, everybody, put your hands together for uh, my my friend Bentley, who is a very talented son of a bitch. He's a voiceover actor, comedian, podcaster. Everybody, put your hands together for my homeboy. Oh shit! I didn't do this. Bentley. Rush. Michaels, there he is. There he is, kids. There he is. There he is. Um, I'm back. He's back, baby. Oh shit. <laughs> he is back. Bentley's back, everybody. Thank you again for doing this, man. I know I I asked you like a day ago, and you're like, oh, I guess I could do that. I'm fucked. Oh. <laughs> I'm, and I'm sorry. I I would have loved to do your birthday your birthday stream, but I, literally that day is a fucking. Uh, we have a dress rehearsal for a charity stream that I'm doing with a local homeless shelter, and it's like. Like well, a that huge, makes sense. It's a huge fucking. It's a huge part of my year. Um, and 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 uh, just it's, I have to do it. So it's all good. No, all good. I'm sorry, Benley. I let you down again, man. <laughs> That's so okay. God damn it. <laughs> you you have not let me down at all, sir. Thank you very much for having me back on your on your program. Yeah, of course. And, uh, of course. Let's see who we can make uh, mad today in the stream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, let's shit on chat today. No, uh, look, Pep, I saw I, you put ahead. a you put a video up of mine that I hadn't I, that I forgot that I did. It was like me in like my very first house, like down in my basement. And I forget. I think it was this series I was doing uh, where it was like um, it was all about music, and it was like I would I took this one piece of music that I had written and I explained it over like how you can make it sound like on an acoustic guitar, how you could take that exact same idea and like melodies and do it with a full band, which it came out to be sort of like, um, like a uh, flogging Molly moving up to Boston type of like that sort of Irishy, you know, yeah. punk rock thing. And then I did a version of it that was all orchestra and it comes out very much uh, like Pirates of the Caribbean sort of uh, uh, Hans Zimmer stuff. And uh, oh, that's dope. Yeah, I, like you, I saw you playing that. I was like, "Oh, I remember this." Like I had completely forgotten about it. But it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's nice to be back. It's been a couple of months or something like that. I, yeah, I don't know, however long. I think I was still doing the play uh, when we last chatted. Yeah, well, you know, I I know because you sent me the play, and I haven't got a chance to see it. So I was gonna I was gonna play some at the beginning, but then I remember you said, "Hey, I don't think I'm supposed to have this." <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely not supposed to have it, and I would. You, we would all. It, it's like that that Hamilton thing that happened in Texas like a month or so ago. What happened? Like, in ha what what happened? Oh, these this this fucking church just like put on a production of Hamilton mm -hmm. and also changed some of the songs. Oh shit! <laughs> and was like taking people's money and live streaming it and like <laughs> and the people from hamilton were like hey man cease and desist and uh we won't sue you <laughs> wow wow and, and they probably made it all into like fucking all religious and shit <laughs> yeah i yeah I, I you know i didn't watch it or anything like that but yeah i just thought i was like god i was talking with my buddy kent who um who was the piano player for the clerk's musical and uh and he was jared's singing double as well and he, I was like, "Are you seeing this shit?" Because he, he's a he's a music education teacher, yeah. and he's just like, he goes, "I he goes the balls on these people, like that's fucking insanity." Right, and and, and, uh, and I think so. From what I understand is that while we while we leased the rights to do Matilda, because I that's what you have to do, we didn't they didn't lease like the video rights or whatever. Mm -hmm but they've got like five HD cameras and they were just going to put it, put it together as yeah. a cast recording. Yeah. They, like it wasn't for sale or anything like that. Right, right, right. And, um, but, uh, yeah, I, I was going to help with the editing of it. So like, I've got multiple nights and stuff. And then, and, and then like an email went out, there was like, 
oh yeah we're not supposed to have that so nobody gets anything and i'm just kind of like sitting there with it on my hard drive i'm like well i'm definitely watching it <laughs> well why wouldn't you honestly why would you we decided to make hamilton uh make hamilton but more historically accurate like with more white people <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you're not taking away my Christ. You're not gonna take away my Christ. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know if I, you know in the I've songs. got a I've got a joke I'm working on right now about how like and it's gone over pretty well the last couple times I've done it. And I go, you know, who is the first like uh volunteer mom on on you know teaching like church school on Sundays? Uh where she realized while singing some of those religious songs that they they don't really hold up today in today's society you know and so i was like i was like i was like who you know and i always go like who who here went to church as a kid or like you know went to a religious school or something like that and i go you guys remember that the noah song it was like get on the arky arky and grab an aardvarky or something like that <laughs> and then i was like or, or there was this one uh Zacchaeus was a wee little man and a wee little man was he he climbed into a sycamore tree just to see what he could see and it's all about a dwarf that just wanted to see a savior oh and like and I was like <laughs> but the one that really doesn't hold up dude is Jesus loves the little children <laughs> and it's Jesus loves the little children all the children of the world red and yellow black and white they are oh. precious it is <laughs> and like all the religious people in the audience will like start singing it with me, you know, and then I just kind of like take the mic away and let them sing that part. I'm like, I'm like, yeah. And, and, and everyone kind of goes like red and yellow, black and oh, I'm like, yeah, yeah, it does, doesn't work out well. I was like, you know what actually pisses me off most about that song is they forgot brown, which is like probably half of the half of the population and definitely what Jesus was based off of his geographical location, right. like anything south of the equator we're talking you know we're talking like you forgot a whole section right and i yeah i had this uh i was up at the, i was doing this show with my buddy up in portland and he was in from chicago and it was a it uh uh it was a largely black audience mm. and like i go on stage he's like you know bentley michaels and he brings me up and i walk by this gal and she's like go get him billy go get him <laughs> Okay. And I got on stage. I was like, did you call me Billy? She goes, yeah. Your name's Billy. I was like, no, Bentley. Like the car or a small dog. And and she was like, oh, I was like, don't white it up for me. Like, <laughs> and she was fucking dying. Like, I had such fun. Like, like her, 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 her like table the entire night. It was like uh, her husband and like their, their, their other married couple. And they, we were just like talking trash, like the whole evening. It was so much fun. That's awesome. A, man. Well, yeah. It was you, such a fun show. Well, you always hear about like comedians who go into like black rooms or black nights and, and you know, like finding, trying to find it. And, and you hear, this is just what I hear. Okay. Uh, is that it could be a little rough and, and it could be a little, it's a little, uh, it's a little loud sometimes. And, uh, yeah, which is amazing. It, it was definitely a lot more chatter and it was, uh, well, it was fun. Cause I was the only white guy on the show. Right. Oh, so it was like my, my buddy Ken and then this other really great comedian named hijinks. And so it was clearly like, I was, you know, one of these things is not like the other. And, uh, <laughs> But my buddy brings me up and we start his show. It's called The Drunken Night. So it's like we do like a podcast section and it's it's like, you know, tell tell a hilarious story about something that happened to you when you were like, you know, drunk or something like that. So I told the story about like, you know, all of us like running out of this party when we weren't supposed to be partying. And my friend and uh, jumping off of this, like down into this embankment to like run up like these, this abandoned train track thing. And he jumped into a thing of blackberry bushes. <gasps> Oh shit! They have thorns, right? Aren't they all thorny? Yeah, that's horrendous. Oh Jesus! Yeah, he looked like a uh, uh, Passion of the Christ, uh, not on the good day. Like <laughs> he, we got back to his apartment, he just like showed me his arms. I was like, "Holy shit, man!" Passion. And he like called his girlfriend. He goes, "Watch this!" And like she comes in and and she's like, "Yeah, like what happened?" Where I was like, "He needs to talk to you," and he just like opens the the bathroom door in his apartment he goes i fell down he's just blood and just lacerations all she goes oh my god she kicks me out of the apartment and like <laughs> the next day at work he was just like sorry she kicked you out i was like no I, I was like i think that's a great uh that's a great thing but yeah i told the story and i just started goofing off and then like obviously having him up there with me on stage was kind of like a good buffer yeah so then 
the other hijinks comes on, tells a story, and then Ken does some stand up. Then he brings us up, and we do about fifteen minutes of stand up. And so, like, I had already sort of had a rapport, and it was kind of like a, but yeah, it was uh, it was funny. And then there's uh, then he does a thing where he gets a bunch of topics uh, from the audience, and then you're supposed to like go and like start drinking, so you get like a buzz going or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then he just gives you topics, and you start like you start like going off like you know and just like creating comedy and stuff and it was so much fun like i i was just like riffing and like they were chatting back and like i was like clapping back at them and stuff like that And it was just like i told them i was like it's just my speed it's just enough to like where they knew when to shut up and like let you tell your mm -hmm. joke but then also like they would fuck with you enough to where i was like oh this is fun yeah like, I, I like that sort of uh that interaction it's and like afterwards point. like i got a like they wanted to take a picture with me and like the <laughs> and like one of the husbands like you know gave me the old the old side hug he's like he's like he's like god damn man you did your thing and i was, I was like <laughs> all right yeah this is great <laughs> yeah. okay now now i don't know about you man but like whenever a black person gives me a compliment on something oh, it's the best it's like better than anything else like yeah it's way better than <laughs> if a white person does it it's so much better <laughs> i swear to god like i at work uh i work and, and sometimes some of the black nurses will come in and i'll be playing music and I, i'll play like some d'angelo and erica badu or or just some like you know some like old soul or something yeah. I, I, like I was playing Mary J. Blige one day, and this late, and this black nurse came in. She's like, "What you know about Mary? What you know about Mary?" I was just like, "Hey, yeah. you know, like it's just." And she's like, "What you know about so?" And then so, I'm just sitting, and I and then of course I come home and tell my wife, and like, yeah, a black person complimented me today, and it's she's it's, like, "So what? Take yeah, trash." <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shut up, fat tits. Get out. Get out there and yeah. make some more money, bitch. Uh, yeah, no, but but it is true. It is true. I, it is true. Black this compliments one, are better. This one thing it was so funny to me. It was like I said something and I was just like uh I was like I was like, well, you know, like I was like, I can't see color because I'm colorblind. And I was like, but not like in a woke way. Like I, <laughs> I legitimately I am can't legitimately see. I can't see color. <laughs> I was like, so like dark greens, dark blues, black, like it all looks oh oh, because my friend was like, he goes, Well, you know, I'm black. I was like, Really? And I said, because uh, I'm colorblind. And, he, and, and and I was like, yeah, like dark greens, dark blues, black. Like it all kind of looks the same. I was like, but it would make way more sense that you and a bunch of the people here are black rather than leprechauns or Smurfs. So like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Fuck it. And, like everyone started fucking laughing. I was like, this is going very well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's so satisfying. Uh, uh, Naders wants to know if you're drinking a PBR. I am. Hey, okay. There you go, Naders. He's drinking a, a, a Pabst Blue Ribbon. It got a blue ribbon for a reason, god damn it. Uh, uh, In 1844. Hey, uh, when I was 19, an older black man told me, you're a real dude, man. You know what's up. I've been holding on to that compliment for a decade. <laughs> Hold on to it tight. Hold on to it tight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I uh, I ahead. was also I was recently over in Eastern Oregon over in Bend uh, and doing stand up with my same friend because he did like a whole like West Coast kind of tour. And I got to see my mom's side of the family, her her brother and like my my cousins and their husbands and wives. And I had not been over there in 22 years. Dang. And I'd seen them all occasionally like here and there, but to see them all sitting in one place. And we like, you know, had dinners and it was, you know, barbecues and this stuff. It was so much fun. But like they got to uh, my cousins and uh, one of their uh, my older cousin's daughter. Uh, they all six of them actually like, came and like watch me do stand up. Oh, nice. and <laughs> and I was like, I wasn't nervous about it until I got there. And then I saw them all sitting there and I go, oh, I know what I'm going to talk about. So I had to go over to him and go like, hey, you're going to learn a lot about me. And I'm really sorry. And <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I talk about some fucking weird shit man and like uh i told this one story actually because my cousin uh he's a he's a police officer over uh, over in bend and has been like my entire life and so i told this story about how like when i was 18 years old my girlfriend and i went over there for some like romantic getaway to like some bungalow like down by a river you like out in nature or some bullshit and we got there like super late at night because I think she worked or something. So we, we were driving this back road and the lights go up behind me. And I was like, don't worry. My cousin's a cop. It's fine. 
and I like, you know, it's kind of like Wayne's world where I was like, hello, officer. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was speeding. I was like, you know, we're, we're trying to find this thing and I didn't see any other cars where he goes, you know, it's like license and registration. I go, yeah, no problem. I was like, do you know my cousin? And I say my cousin's name and he goes, yeah. And he turns around and walks back, comes back and he goes, slow the fuck down. Here's your ticket. Your cousin's a good guy. And I was like, I was like, I told my cousin that and he was just like, you must not have been a fan of me then because he still gave you the ticket. I was like, yep. He goes, well, hot damn. And I remember looking over my girlfriend and her being like, yeah, your cousin's a cop, huh? <laughs> Great. Nice. <laughs> you really, you really pulled it. You really pulled it out. Wow. Uh, but jokes on them. I never, uh, I never paid the ticket. So <laughs> wait, wait, but doesn't that mean that you get like, it doesn't get worse. Uh, it, yeah, I, I told my cousin that and he goes, well, it's been 22 years. <laughs> I highly doubt that you have a warrant out for your arrest over still, here. <laughs> still have a bench warrant waiting for yeah, you. He goes, he, and then like, I saw him a couple days later after he'd gone to work. He goes, I looked you up with the computer. You're cool. And I was like, <laughs> he actually looked at the, Hey, you know, yeah, cause I was like, well, now I'm actually interested. He goes, I'll look you up when I go into work. And he looked me up and he's like, nah, you're good. <laughs> He uh, goes, you actually have a, a an amazing driving record. I was like, oh, thanks. I just don't really go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you, you know what? My my record's pretty good too. I, I'm a good driver. I'm a good fucking driver, and I go. Places. I am. I am as well. Like I'm like my buddy when I because like he was in town. He stayed uh, near me, and so like we drove up to Portland, and I drove him to the airport that night after the show, and and uh, he was like, man, you drive like an old bitch, and I was just. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I well, started laughing. I was like, I was like, I'm in the middle lane, but I don't need a speeding ticket. Yeah, like I don't want to pay that. Exactly. It, it, <clears throat> look, and, and then, okay, tell me this, Bentley. Yeah. <clears throat> People who drive the speed limit in the fast lane, your feelings, oh, your feelings. Get on the it. fuck, dude. <laughs> Put a vest with a bunch of pockets on and take a hike. Like, get the <laughs> fuck out of here with that shit. Uh, uh, did you hear him, Raina? Did you hear him? <laughs> Like, unless, like, you've got, like, unless it's, like, because uh, I know, like, there's certain parts in Portland and then, obviously, like, Los Angeles, like, major, more metropolitan cities mm. where it's, like, uh, you have to have multiple people in the car or whatever. Like, you have to, it's, like, at least, it's, like, it's the carpool lane, I think, is what they call it. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, no, I'm, uh, I'm annoyed by that. Like, or it's, like, if I am in the left lane, because there's, like, certain freeways that I get yeah. on, like, when I go teach dance or something, I have to be in the left lane because there's a lot of semi-trucks. I mean, I guess that's true for everywhere. Just, like, but the corridor of the freeway that I, I, I take or when I go teach dance, there's always so much. So it's, like, I'm in the left lane because I don't want to be behind a huge semi-truck that's, like, swerving all over the place or whatever. Right. And, and so it's, like, I'll pass a semi-truck, and then I'll get back over, and then it's, like, I'll pass another one. But my favorite thing in the entire world is like if I'm in the left lane and like the line ahead of me is like going slow and the people that are behind me, they're like, fuck this. So they get in the middle lane and then they like cut in front of me and then immediately have to slow down. I was like, yeah, no, I'm not just driving Miss Daisy. <laughs> like it's the the people in Dicks. front of me are going slow as fuck. <clears throat> and then it's like I'll like get in the center lane and I usually – I'm a super asshole, and like I'll drive up beside him and like wave at him and be like, "Hey, hey, fuck face, <laughs> hey, you it's fucking like, idiot." Yeah, I wasn't making shit up, man. I'm like, I'm not the slow guy. If I'm in the left lane, I'm going. I'm always pacing. Uh, I'm always pacing who's in front of me. Actually, like, like the second to last day of doing Matilda, uh, I was like on my way to the theater, and there's like a stretch of highway, and. I was pacing like this red um, Chevy, whatever they, what is it, a Camaro? I think they, that's like the Bumblebee car in the Transformer movies or yes. whatever. Yeah. I just see those and I go, that's the Bumblebee car. And because uh, uh, that's how I used to explain it to my son as a kid. Yeah. I was like, look, Bumblebee car. Yeah. And, um, but this thing, this guy was hauling ass and it's brand new. It's like a, definitely like a 2022 you know hauling ass bright red and i'm just following it and i'm not paying attention to how fast i'm going because i'm like listen i would like always warm up so it's like i would listen to the songs and i had recorded myself doing the scenes and all that sort of stuff so i would listen to that and i would like be going over my lines and warming my voice up and that sort of stuff and i'm just pacing the car in front of me and then all of a sudden lights pop up behind me <laughs> i was like what the fuck i was like oh it must be for that red uh, camaro and i like i go over and then it follows me i was like motherfucker 
And so, like, I pull over. On average, on average, how long do you think a traffic stop normally takes? Uh, do you think? 15, 20 minutes tops. Right. right. I was there less than five minutes. And I got a ticket. Ooh. And I was like, I... I had my insurance stuff like on, on the app, but of course I hadn't been on the app forever. So I logged out and I was like, what's my password? I'm trying to figure it out, but I didn't have it printed in my car. And so she gave me a $500 ticket for speeding and no proof of insurance, 250 a pop. Oof. And I was like, bullshit. Bitch. And so like I paid the speeding cause I was speeding, but I wrote a letter to the judge and I took it to uh, the, the the county court. Like it's about 40 minutes uh, south of me. Yeah. And wrote this letter saying, this is what happened. This is what I was doing. Hoping the judge saw the play, by the way. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, your officer gave me less than five minutes of their time. And I was trying to pull up my insurance to shield. I was like, I understand that I need to have it and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And, um, I was like, my contact information is here. Please let me know if I need to pay the other two fifty. And I, I never heard from him, so I'm assuming they waived it. And my cousin <laughs> checked my driver's record, so he said it was cool. No, and, it uh, <laughs> is. But then it must be cool. Then it it's... must be cool. Yeah, it's. Uh, wow. I, I was, and it was so funny too because I was just thinking that day. Of course, I was like, you know, you've been traveling to Corvallis for the last four and a half months, anywhere from three to six times a week and yeah. you've never once had the cops around you or anything and of course that day i got i got popped it's and i was like day. man have you have, <laughs> have you had... dude i lost my car the other day you, you lost it i had a you lost your an car. old man i had an old man brain fart where i went downtown mm. and i was gonna buy i'm going to a local book place i was gonna buy a book and I had circled the block a couple of times and, you know, and I, it's, it's in the exact same area where I used to do the barbecue stuff. Okay. So it's like a block over from that. So I was going to go visit my friends that were at the bar in the food court that I used to work for after. So like I walk to the bookstore, get my book, walk over a block, hang out with my friends for like 30, 40 minutes. We watch like the, um, end of the, uh, Halle Berry, James Bond movie with Pierce Brosnan or whatever, where they're like, I think they're like in the, the, like an ice casino or something like that and they're, they've got it on the because my buddy owns the bar so he just puts on terrible movies all the time <laughs> okay and we're just sitting there joking and i was like all right well i gotta go i gotta go do some recording stuff i'll see you guys later Brush. and because i had like because i had parked down there for so like for eight months while i was doing the barbecue stuff like i went to where i thought i would be parked and i was like well no that's not it I was like, oh, no, you're probably a block over because you would have parked in front of, like, the, the book place downtown. Yeah. Walked over. I, for 30 minutes, walked around downtown, up and down side streets. At one point, I go back into my buddy's bar just sweating because it was, like, 100 degrees. Like, I don't know how hot it is for you guys, but it's just been in the 90s for like a month here it's, it's not bad it, it hasn't been bad dude fucking oregon gets hot son it gets well yeah hot. like well yeah we're in the valley too so it's mm. like the heat it like it's eugene and in so that like eugene is in that too or no uh that's about an hour south of me right right so is that's not the valley that's more of the mountain no uh no it's pretty flat out there it's uh they just have that one portland's about an hour north of yeah yeah you're right in the middle in the capital i remember that now yeah but i like go into my friend's bar and i'm wearing like you know a t-shirt and shorts or whatever i've sweated through like multiple parts of my shirt i was glistening i'm why guy i think i think i'm crazy because i was like he goes, I didn't want to make fun of you on the day because I could tell how bad of a time you were having. He goes, but fuck, you look like you were tweaked out on some meth or something like that. <laughs> he, goes, he goes, you come like into the bar talking to yourself going like, I can't find my car. I can't find my car anywhere. I've been walking yeah. around all the since I last left you. I've been walking up and down the streets, up and down the streets. Just boom, boom, boom. There's nowhere. My car's nowhere. Would they have towed it? No, because it's been less than three hours. So they can't it, it, like and, and they and why would they tow it so quickly? He goes, he goes. He goes, it was really hard to feel bad for you because all I wanted to do was make fun of you. <laughs> and of course. I was like, and like, and then I was like, I was like, well, I guess I'm just gonna have to widen my search pattern, is I guess something that I said. Widen so I gotta I was, widen the net here. 
Yep. Get and so I was just like, well, on. I haven't been this way. And so I just took a right and started walking. And then I saw a car sitting on the side of the street and it all came back. I was like, oh, you're parked right around the corner because you circled the block twice and then you, you just grabbed the first mm. spot. And it was right in front of this little Starbucks on the corner across from this uh, across from this church. And I just saw my car sitting there and I texted both of my friends and I was like, found it. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> No, that shit. Fuck, that shit's real though, man. That shit's real. I okay, okay. So, I I'm kind of an asshole, but like I was. <laughs> okay, when I was younger, I was kind of an asshole. Uh, more of an asshole. I was an asshole. I was like 22, 23, and my sister was getting married, and it was her. She was getting married on this weekend that happened to be this hippie festival that I really had to go to. And my sister, I remember her, ple- she was pleading with me. She was like, do not go to this. I I need you at your my wedding. You're in the wedding. Please don't go. I was like, look, I'm just going to go one night, okay? One go real quick. <laughs> real quick. <laughs> We're get in and out, you know, in and out, in and out. And it's going to be fine. I'll be back before the wedding starts. A-OK. So, of course, we go down. I get fucking so hammered, fucked up, out of my mind, You're like right. just wandering around all night. And then finally, like I'm up all night, dude. I'm up all fucking yeah. night, and and it's like six in the morning, and I'm like, okay, I gotta, we gotta get out of here. We gotta go. So I start <laughs> looking for my car, and I swear to God, I was looking for my car for four hours, walking up and down. I'm fucked up. I'm looking for my friends who rode with me. And if I couldn't have found them, if I wouldn't have found them, I would have left their asses because I had to get to my sister's wedding. And I was three hours away from, from Toledo. So, like, oh, we had to get on the road. And fuck it. And time is ticking. Time is ticking. Time is ticking. Sure. And I'm just like, what the fuck? And I can't find it. And, and, and I finally go up to a, a one of the people. I was like, are they towing cars, dude? Like, I cannot find my fucking car. Where's my car? He's like, dude, no one's towing cars. He's like, did you look in the other parking lot? And, and, I, and I'm oh. like, no. Where is that? <laughs> Where's the other parking, parking lot, you say? <laughs> <laughs> so he fucking, he like literally walks me over there oh and helps God. me try to find my car. And I immediately find it because everything comes <laughs> rushing back. I remember where it's at. I get to. Yeah, you see that, you see that image and you're just like, oh, <sighs> this is the, and, and the thing that was fucking pissing me off the most was like. I was like, I know I'm not a fucking crazy person, like, <laughs> right. and I'm also like, I'm not that old yet. So why the <laughs> fuck, like, my brain just wasn't like right, you were connecting like... the memory of 90 minutes ago when I parked my car. <laughs> like, it's how it goes, bro. It was midday. It was like <laughs> one o'clock in the afternoon. I wasn't drinking. I wasn't doing anything. Damn, I was stone just, like, sober. <laughs> that's why. That's why it was so fucking frustrating to me because I'm like. Why the fuck can't I remember where I just parked my goddamn car? Yeah, it's, <laughs> like... it's, it's 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 probably just gonna get worse, dude. By the way, I, I miss my sister's wedding. I I, I completely miss. Oh, that. it's all okay. I'm sure you guys worked it out. Yeah, we worked out. She got divorced from that guy anyway, so whatever. So hey, fuck so, <laughs> right? so who cares? <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> that didn't work out. It didn't work out. So hey, it's all good. Uh, so, yeah, like I've ha- I've got a couple of friends like that that are on like. <clears throat> like their third one they're like hey will you be there for my special day i'm like fuck no <laughs> i'm like i'm not dressing up to come to your third wedding <laughs> <laughs> third three day, dude. Like, get the fuck out of here with that it's shit t-shirt like, and jeans I'm wearing, son i'm wearing i'm wearing cut off jean shorts and a t-shirt at <laughs> most <up>. like <laughs> <laughs> shut up cut off jean shorts get out of here i've got them i know you do i can feel it i can feel it from here you and everyone else in oregon has it so there it is i, mean, I don't know about that i just i remember wearing them all the time as a kid and then like i had these pair of jeans that i was like they were they were given to me by my uh by my ex and i was like i'm never going to wear these pants because like mm. that's when she had she had checked out she's like here these ones i'm like yeah, I would never wear these. They're like boot cut fucking Levi something <laughs> yeah. or whatever, you know, like big old like dad pants. And I was yeah. just like, I'm barely a dad. I was like, I'm Aww. a stepdad, you know. And so like, uh, like I'm not wearing these boot cut flared bullshits. And so I just cut them off. And uh, 
one of my i was teaching a dance class like a month ago and one of my kids was like did you uh did you cut those yourself i was like yeah why and they're like they're just it's actually it's really good they're very even like that's like the biggest problem when you i was like yeah i've got a little ocd like yeah, i've got a little <laughs> little uh, I, it would drive me nuts if they're uneven you know it's like one's <laughs> halfway down your knee the one's above your knee it's just like come yeah fuck on yeah, I, yeah, I'm not that. So all my cutoffs are like one's down by my shin, the other one's like halfway up my thigh. I'm just like I'm going with it. I don't give a fuck. This is how I'm living. I got bitches. a pair of sweatpants that are like that, but I'm too lazy to like refix it because yeah. I was like, I kind of like the length <laughs> yes. of, of one side, and <laughs> the other side I'm like more like I use more, so it's like you can't really <laughs> tell. I guess I don't more. know. <laughs> I use my other side. Well, it's, it's it's like I only wear them when I dance, and so it's like my right side is a little bit shorter, and so it's like when I'm tap dancing, like my right foot inevitably gets used more because I'm you know I'm right handed, mm. so usually you're you know that's the side you're, that like you're you kind of go to first. Yeah, uh, or or as my teacher called it, uh, busy foot and dumb foot. Oh. There's always the dumb foot that's just going like bump, bump, bump while your foot's going like blah, 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 or whatever. Oh well, look now, Nader's is changing out of his boot cut Levi's. That, look what you did, Bentley. Look what you did. Oh, you're, you're already attacking. Make, you're making the right move, Nader's. You're making the right move. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Pepe had a teacher uh, that went to school, uh, and when he was gonna go home, he couldn't find his car, so he called the police report it stolen when he was coming home he found it in the garage <laughs> well he Dude, shouldn't have been teaching around he shouldn't have been teaching I was walking around thing. hitting the button too oh god I was like, maybe i'll be like be within the range where i can hear my car horn like honk or whatever like <laughs> It never works. It never fucking works. I do the same shit. Well, no, I, yeah, I was two blocks away from it. You so can't like, hear you it. Know. You can't hear that shit. It's like, especially mine is like such a beat, like, because it's like a, a, I guess, newer car. Not really. It's over. It's like oh, 10 sure. years old, but it's like a beep beep. It's not like the old school, like, fucking. Oh, yeah. Mine's old school. It's yeah. a 2004. It's oh, okay. A, it's, an old, it's an old, uh, 2004 Ford Taurus. It looks like a cop car. <laughs> oh, that is tight. That yeah. is well, something special. You know, when you get a divorce, sometimes you need a car. So, like, I, I went to a dead grandma auction and bought it for 3200 bucks. <laughs> sometimes in life, you need sometimes a fucking life, affordable and, car. And what's crazy is I bought it in 2017. It was a 2004. It had 28,000 miles on it, which is why the other reason I bought it. Yeah. I was like, that's a that's, that's a it. solid investment right there. That's it. This that's car's been one. around for 13 years and it has less than 30,000 miles on it. Wow. There you go. There it is. Yeah. It was a it was a solid investment. It was really weird to be over when I was over there with my family because it was like my male cousin, the cop, and his dad. And at one point, we were all like sitting on on chairs like around the fire with our legs out in front of us crossed at the ankles and we all kind of sit like this naturally and like i like kind of like you know like poked my cousin i was like i was like don't don't make any sudden moves but look at you me and your dad and we were all posed the exact same he goes whoa that's fucked up and I'm like <laughs> it was it was really interesting to be around all of them uh, for the first time in like 22 years because I was like, I always just assume that while physically <clears throat> I look and sound a lot like my dad, I didn't realize how much I looked like them as well. Yeah. Like I didn't realize, like I was like, oh, <clears throat> I look a lot more like them than I thought. And like just personality traits being around them and stuff like that. I was just like watching all this stuff and I was just like, holy shit. Like, yeah. Wow. That is nuts to be around. Just like the way they laugh, the way they move certain like little things that they do. I was like, I do all of those things. Yeah. That's, I that's love that insane. about family though. I love that about family that it's like these people that you've just sort of known your whole life and you all have a piece of each other inside of each other, which sounds weird. But it the uh, <laughs> <laughs> you all have you all are in each other. Uh but the the but I like that about family and, and that was what was kind of cool about coming back to Ohio after living in California for so many years is that is reconnecting with stop it, Nate. You better stop. You fuck it. He said giggity. Uh, the listen. I I do have a listen. I do have a cousin who's pretty hot, and she may or may not have given me a boner one time in my life, on purpose. Okay, and she thought it was funny. Is she available? No. Ah, well, no. 
She's a <laughs> she's a nurse practitioner who is definitely fucking living her best life. Um, but uh, we Those were young. nurses, man. They like to, they like to get down. Nurses are a different kind of people, man. I, I I've come to know like working with nurses. I I work in a kitchen at a retirement home, so like I'm working with nurses and 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 aides all the time, and they're um they are different people, man. Like today, one of the nurses came like in. the disease. I knew that was gonna happen. No, like no, like nurses aides, they're aides. I knew that was what's gonna happen. One of the one of the fucking. <laughs> One of the nurses came in today, and I mean, they're just very straightforward to the point. Like, they don't like fucking around because they've seen like horrible things, you know? They've seen like yeah, death someone and just blood. on them earlier. Oh, or, yeah, someone just vomited on their fucking tits, yeah. you know? It's like whatever just happened is just horrible, and it's just like the, the, the dredges of humanity. So, like, uh, I, I, you know, I mad respect. Well, <laughs> this one nurse today was like, fucking, someone was sick because they, uh, they got the flu shot. And they had a fever, and she's like, "That's why I don't get no fucking vaccines." <laughs> and I was like, "Wait, <laughs> no vaccines?" And she's like, "None." I was like, "Wait, is that not even oh the vaccine?" And she's like, <laughs> "Not even that fucking vaccine. Fuck that yeah. vaccine." I was it's like, "It's oh, crazy." Geez. I know, I know some people that yeah that are that are in the medical field that that haven't. I uh, yeah. I sent you on uh, on Messenger. I sent you a picture of my cousin and brought I, to I, you I, by Pfizer. <laughs> Fuck you. Yep, there it is. Pay me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bon. <laughs> Bro, I don't see the canceled stamp, but I want I want it for the cousin boner. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Listen, I was young. And thank you for those biddies, Papa Sweet. I appreciate you. Uh yeah, we should probably cancel me for even talking about that. I'm sure I'm sure that uh that that if my cousin heard that, she would be horrified. <laughs> There you go. Canceled. <laughs> uh, there it is. Canceled for... We're canceled now, friend. We're canceled. Yeah, exactly. It happened. Thank uh, you. Robert Danny Jr. here. Just letting you know that you're canceled because your cousin gave you a boner. So <laughs> think about that. Maybe come back to me or don't. Doesn't really matter. Also, you missed your sister's first wedding. I uh, heard that was a great travesty. It was. But you know what? I made up for it on the second wedding. But yeah, it's it, no on the good one. Yeah, on on the one that's still valid. It's still going, still rocking and rolling. So wait, you you uh you were saying something about you got friends in the, the 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 medical field. I don't know what you. Oh saying. oh, uh, and and from what I've uh yeah I've I've talked to some of them and yeah some of them too. They're just like I'm not taking that fucking vaccine. Yeah. <laughs> I was like interesting, interesting. It is interesting. Like, it is interesting. And and uh, to see her so vehemently fucking just opposed to it. And honestly, yeah. like right now, I know like two or three people who have family members that are actually fucking who like one was hospitalized, another one's in serious condition from injuries from the shot. And oh, so, interesting. And so it's like, oh, man, you know, like I, I, I've, I've, I've talked all about it and I kind of like backed away from talking about it, obviously, because sure. everybody was fucking getting fucking canceled and shit. And plus, I, I just talked over it too much. During the pandemic, I was just going nuts on everything. So, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, everyone was. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, again, I, I would never say to anybody not to get the shot, but I, I definitely, it's definitely the, the idea of asking questions shouldn't be something that makes you a bad person. No, right? no. Yeah. You shouldn't be demonized, demonized for wanting to know facts or wanting to further educate yourself on something before doing, you know, something like that. Right. Um, <clears throat> absolutely not. I uh, I split my shin open the other day. Ooh, that sounds fun. <clears throat> yeah, I. Um, Were you tap dancing? <clears throat> no, I'd taken out my. It's, it was way dumber. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> I'd taken out my bath mat in my bathroom to like wash it, you know, uh, so it doesn't get all uh, sour smelling. Right. And I just had a towel down, <laughs> but like I wasn't used to that, so I like <sighs> stood up and turned and uh slipped like it was fucking home alone and my shin went straight into the side of the uh um of the bathtub and then i fell over <laughs> into oh. the bath <laughs> and i just like i like i paused for a second because like you know <laughs> that, ever since tom segura broke his arm playing oh, basketball shit. like anytime i've fallen i'm like because i'm 40 i'll be 41 next week i'm yeah. just like i just like sat there for a second was like 
waiting for pain to kick in. I was like, okay, it's only my shin. And I just kind of straighten my le left leg out and I look at my shin and I just see it go like, uh... and like, I was like, neat. And, but like, my shins are all kind of messed up anyway. Cause like when I used to kickbox and do martial arts, oh, shit. you would have to, we'd have to hit them with bamboo sticks to like, to like, and we would like roll along the shins to kill the nerve endings and also but just like toughen up the skin and that sort of stuff oh, you're doing the jean-claude van damme type shit yeah blood yep. sport shit God yep. damn. <laughs> he took and that my, shit my seriously. instructor actually to get rid of my flinch <laughs> yeah uh i would have to stand in a horse stance look into the mirror and he would walk around and hit me with a stick and like uh and if i flinched i had to do 20 push-ups on my knuckles oh shit. and it was like it was like the floor the floor was cement with that really bad gray <gasps> nylon office carpet you know oh. it's basically velcro yeah yeah and yeah so <clears throat> to this day these two knuckles cuz you're supposed to just do them on these two the front two the rams head mm -hmm. knuckles they're both flat and have scars all over them from me <laughs> doing so many until like i lost my flinch basically but he would do the hit on the legs hit on the stomach and in my head i was going like this is just like blood sport <laughs> <laughs> of course <laughs> oh my goodness yeah. he was awesome he uh he quit teaching martial arts to like open up a, a restaurant and stuff he was he was a really really cool guy he, and um is he dead he was a black belt no i i haven't been able to find him online i've oh. looked him up multiple times so i don't know maybe he is dead oh. but like um he uh he was a black belt in like four or five other martial arts so he was like one of the first ones that realized i think whether he knew it or not that i was adhd because like I wouldn't focus, but he would show me like the stuff for the week, and then he would, and then he would uh, um, say, "Now if you're in Taekwondo, you would be around here," and then we like, we'd learn some of that. And then he's like, "And then if you're like in traditional like Shotokan karate, you're doing this sort of stuff." And so like when I would go to tournaments, I would see who I was fighting from what school or whatever, and I would match their stance and mm. fight in their style for a little bit. And it used to, he, I would just hear him cackling on the side of the, you know, on the side of the, uh, of the thing or whatever. And I remember this one, this Taekwondo kid, uh, I knew who he was and he had really, he has really fast feet. And so I was like, he's going to come in at me because I've been watching him like, you know, the other, at, you know, throughout the tournament or whatever. Yeah. Like he's going to charge me. And I did like this reverse jump spin kick and I yes. caught him right in the solar plexus Ooh. and he went flying back and hit and they were like you know like, and i just heard him like i heard him hit and then i and then they're like they're like point you know blah 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 <clears throat> and it was silent for a second then i just heard <sighs> and i totally knocked the wind out of this kid that's i, I felt so bad well, that's <laughs> they, what they called to it do, they were son. like He's like, I can't. He's like, I can't. Bleh. You know, and just, they called it. They're like, you know, that's tight. <laughs> that's tight. What is what did you supposed to do though? You're fucking. You're sparring. That's that's how it works. It's, yeah, you I might have went uh, a little fucking hefty, but like, hey, you won. Well, that and I was so small. Like I was smaller than oh. most people too. So it's like I I didn't think because and the kid was bigger than me. So I figured how hard I kicked him. Like because I was smaller. Like I didn't. It didn't process in my brain that i could have hurt him uh, i was like and that was like the first time i actually realized that i was like oh i can hurt i was like what i know actually can hurt somebody even if they're yeah. bigger than me which worked out for me well you know because i was a little smart mouth and and a lot of the kids in my junior high grew to be the size that they were as adults in mm. the seventh grade mm. so i got picked on a lot and like stuffed into lockers and i spent classes in there and like on the side of lockers and stuff it's like it's a real thing but yeah, I remember the first time one of the bullies came after me and I like tie kicked his his thigh Ooh. and it didn't hit for a second. And then it's like he took it was like T1000 getting frozen and he like took a couple more steps and then he just went down because I Charlie yeah. horsed, horsed his leg basically. Damn. That's yeah. Tight. And then I was like, I was like, and I looked around at his friends. I was like, who's next? Like, you know, <laughs> just <clears> if you got yeah, to. I was, yeah, I was an insane kid, but like that's a, but that's how you gotta be if you're fucking getting fucked with. Because I was fat, I was a fat fuck, so like I had kids fucking with me, but they yeah. couldn't. But but like I wasn't they, I was fat, and I wouldn't fucking hit anybody unless they came at me. And then so these mother, but and I would talk shit because I'm a shit yeah. talker. And then yeah. so they would come for me, and I'd fuck them up. And I was in Taekwondo too. I made it up to green belt. So like, nice. 
I was fucking kids up. It, too bad I don't remember any of that. And every time I've fought and <laughs> since I've been an adult, I've always gotten my ass floored. So, you know, <laughs> I, I haven't fought in a long, long time. I think the last time that I fought, the last time that I, f that I remember it, I was like in my early 20s. Wow. I know. Yeah, me too. <clears throat> It's why I it's why I don't drink whiskey anymore. Cause like I was just like talking shit to this guy, getting punched in the face, walking at him, <laughs> laughing at him, and then I then I did something probably terrible. Like I, yeah, I still, uh, yeah, I got a good front kick still, uh, <laughs> roundhouse kicks and that sort of stuff. But a front kick is really like all you need. Like you, yeah. you hit somebody with like one of those or whatever. And and also what the the terrible part is too is that like my instructor would be like if you're in a street fight and you like you're you feel like that you know you're in danger he's like you don't play nice yeah. he's like kick someone in the kneecap he the goes balls, he goes that whatever. will ruin someone's yeah. day and i was like in their life too probably he goes yeah but if it's between you and them you know like he would he, he was always very and that guy that guy always knew when i forgot to wear my cup to uh <laughs> to to a session because he would like he could tell in my posture and like how I was defending or whatever. Yeah. Like, Let's spar. And this is this dude who's so quick, so fast, so strong. And he would just try to fucking with kicks or whatever, just try to like he and then like he'd be like, guard your groin. I know you're not wearing it. Guard your groin. You know, and I'd be like, Oh, you son of a bitch. Dude, fuck, <laughs> dude. Oh man. Oh, we have a couple questions <clears throat> from the chat for you. Awesome. So we sure. should probably we should probably address them since they've been out there. Uh, for since what? they've been listening to us just <laughs> gab like a couple of gals on a mom walk. Uh, exactly, exactly. Um <laughs> hey, you know what? This is how we catch up, you know, guys. This just, just yeah. let us let's, let us chat. Uh no, I'm just kidding. The first hour is for us, the second hour is for you. <laughs> when did uh when did you understand that you wanted to be a stand up comedian? Uh, guess he guess his friend pushed him. So, oh, so this was when you were talking about about doing uh, doing stand up. But uh, when did you when oh. did you want to become a stand up comedian? And what when did you understand? He, he's from Sweden, so like the English is. Oh, I I'm got it. Yeah, it's I'm all good. Um, I would say that. Um, I would say that I've always kind of wanted to do it when I lived in Los Angeles and from like 2007 to about 2010, everybody that I knew down there, like that I was working with professionally that I, you know, I, I had like this group of people I was doing short films with and doing voiceover stuff with and like probably five or six people told me, they're like, you should do stand up, man. You're really funny. You should do stand up. Like the way that you talk and the way that you tell stories and stuff like that, like you're just naturally funny. And, mm. and so I had thought about doing it down there and then <clears throat> just never did and then my butt there was an open mic here in town and my my friend richard went he's like i'm gonna i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it and i was like cool i'll come and watch and i watched him do it and this motherfucker murdered he hmm. i've i i recorded the set i still have it and listen to it he <laughs> for his first one murdered and it was so because he's just like another funny guy. He told this amazing story and it was just destroyed. And like you hear my friend Jared, who uh, um, who plays uh, 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 Randall in the Clerks musical because he was he was the host of the of the open mic. You hear him get on stage. He goes, thanks, everybody. You know, everyone just explodes laughing. You hear he goes, he goes, what the hell was that, man? He goes, you just come out of nowhere, and like, and I was like, oh, dude, I can do half as bad as that for sure. <laughs> and so, the next week, the first Thursday in February of 2014, I went on stage and I did my first, I did my first set, and it was a lot. It didn't go bad. It wasn't as good as my friends at all, but like, it was a lot of setup for every joke. It was just be like. Oh, and then this, oh, and then, the, you know, and then I would get to the punchline and people would like laugh or whatever. Yeah. But then there's footage of me online. And I think you've, you've probably seen it. Yeah. And I it's think like I played this, it in this before. Or yeah. The yeah. The, before. the thing from like 2015, 11 months later, that entire set was completely, um, 
completely improvised because I'd planned on doing something else because they were recording. And then I, the second I got on stage, I was like, I need to complain about my son's basketball practice because they are fucking terrible. <laughs> like, I think the line I said was, and I improvised this and it's still a really good line. I was like, they're like the mighty ducks before Emilio Estevez shows up. Like they are just <laughs> fucking dog shit. Yeah. And I just like talked about that. And I talked about like some Oregon ducks football game and hanging out with my son and stuff. And people were like, holy fuck, I didn't know you had those jokes. I was like, I made all of that up. Mm -hmm. I was like, I kind of blacked out. I don't know what happened. I just went um, for it, yeah. But yeah, it was February 2014. And I've just always, because of doing theater and because of, you know, um, uh, hosting some certain things and seeing my father like do like live radio and live television and different stuff, like it's never... And having done so much like live theater in front of audiences and playing music in front of people, like I was mm -hmm. always the guy that like if something happened, my the mic went into my mouth and I just started talking to entertain people until like yeah. whatever was fixed. The string was replaced or the drum head was like, you know, whatever it was. Yeah. And so and it's never bothered me. And because I record myself so much, I'm sure you have a similar thing is that like. I've never had that thing of. Like the I call it the Marge Simpson thing of, is that what my voice sounds like coming out of a speaker mm. or or whatever? Like, <clears throat> since I was a little kid, I was eleven years old, doing like live theater in Pioneer Courthouse Square in Portland, Oregon. Mm. Like just stopping, just like people on their lunch break and being like, "We're gonna do a show right here," and like we're just gonna project in it. So. It's, I, and then obviously have, having done close to 10,000 voiceovers now, yeah. I've edited myself a lot. Right, right. And so like I, I, I have sort of like a, a disassociation with hearing my voice. And I think that's like the biggest thing for people when they first start is that they're like, oh, shit, is this where do I put the mic? Where do I do this? What da, 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 da. And like I remember there is this time this this fucking guy that was like running a mic. uh and he goes so because he'd never heard me before he didn't know what i could do and like he he goes so um so you're brand new and and for whatever reason he thought i was brand new i mm. don't know why he goes so this is this is how you hold the microphone uh you put it right you know talk you know it's like a sure sm58 or whatever he's right. like you know you put it right in front of you a good two to three inches here so you got good and i went hey man I talk into a microphone for a living. I understand how they work. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> and he was just like, he was like, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. For some reason, I thought you had never done stand-up. I was like, no. Real quick, someone that's never done stand-up before <laughs> is going to do 15 minutes tonight? Like, does that sound right to you? And he goes, oh, yeah, I guess so, huh? And I, I was like, are we good? Because I'm going to go have a drink at the bar. Like, I'm going to go buy their cheapest beer. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, but I hope I answered the question. Like, it, it, it was always did. something I wanted to do. And now that I do it, it's just like, even like, like during the play, like I took time off from like doing it. And I kind of got back into it because my buddy was coming to town. So I started going to open mics again and, and just dusting off some like some old bits and that sort of stuff mm -hmm. working on some new bits what is like, always before you move on with that i'm so sorry nader's gotta go and it's his birthday and he asked a question yeah. what's your favorite voice to impersonate what is my favorite and this voice is from to nader's impersonate? just so we can ask his question before he leaves sure um it depends on the day it really just depends on the situation like if i want to be silly and talk fast i do robert downey jr because he's really good at that it's kind of like non -lay you know you know, he can pretty much, you know, Nader, happy birthday. First of all, Robert Danny Jr. here. And I uh, just want to say happy birthday. Have a great time. Uh, you know, don't do anything I wouldn't do or would have already done. They got me thrown in jail. Uh, and so it's like you kind of like it can kind of like or like if I want to be more contemplative, it's, you know, Nick Offerman, uh, you know, Ron Swanson, where it's like, yes, well, here's the thing about birthdays. They're really meaningless. So happy birthday. You know, yeah. it, it kind of just depends on the joke or whatever. Um, the longest running one, obviously, is Van Damme. Uh, just because, like, I, I've done it since, like, I used to watch Bloodsport all the time on TBS. <laughs> and uh, I just thought, like, this guy talks funny. Like, yeah. he doesn't sound like Arnold. He doesn't sound like anybody else. Like, he just has a funny voice. Is he French, by the way? What is he? Austrian? Yeah, he's from Belgium. He's and from so Belgium. his first language is French. His second language is German. His third language is English. Son of a bitch. Yeah. Sunday to bitch. Is that good enough, guys? <laughs> and, like, um, 
and then or like uh <laughs> bloodsport what a good movie hey, yeah classic. like uh the yeah the i forgot what i was gonna say but but yeah it just depends on or or like the the scenario so like when i was younger i i heard someone say giggity earlier and for me as a as a early 20 something first starting to drink the beers that's right when the family guy dvds came out oh, so like yeah. those would be on it in the background at parties Hell and yeah. i would like watch the special features and i would watch them do the voices and right. stuff so i would just because seth actually like, will talk about it he'll be like i gotta like clamp this and put my well yeah with to... peter he talks out of the i didn't yeah. realize how he was doing it but he talks out of the side of his mouth which sort of gives him like that tweeter right. sort of like that so, you know, I mean, you could do Peter Griffin when you chalk it just like this. But the second you take it over here to the side of the mouth, it really starts to sound like it. It's like, hey, you dumb bastard. What are you doing? Giggity, I'll show you what I'm doing. Giggity goo. Oh, on your face. Happy birthday. <laughs> you know. What about walking? Naders wants to know about walking. Oh, walking? Uh, walking isn't somebody that Zippy, I do. welcome um, in. Oh, so that's a no. That's a no, Naders. Hey, uh, I mean, guys, I can do in. it. It, but it's like it's not something that I do because so many people do. It's kind of similar to Arnold. Like, mm. uh, but yeah, walking, it always is kind of here, sure, you, me, hanging out. But he goes down and does the whisper, and that's the fun part. Like, uh, but like that's as good as it gets. Like I don't really practice it or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeff Goblin is uh, yes, 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 is somebody that I've uh, been working on uh, recently because of the. Uh, because of the uh, the dinosaurs and the uh, the credit card commercials, mm, yes, making that money. <laughs> Thanks for the bitties, Papa Sweet. No <laughs> worries. Hey guys, welcome in. Hey Bentley, uh, we're gonna take a pause for the cause. We got a we got a raid up in this bitch. Uh, Ooh, uh, give me. Mean? Uh, it means that uh, Zippy Zipper brought her community over to uh, to the show. So uh, welcome in. And then she brought Robbie with her. Hold on, uh, hold on, guys. Let yes, me go grab Robbie. my guitar. All right, all right, Bentley Vamp. Oh, uh, oh, he's going to get his guitar. Mm, an empty chair. So many possibilities. Uh, dear God, uh, look at that space background. Is he in space? Mm, who knows? Zippy zipper, uh, zippy zipper. I forgot. I forgot already what he said. Hello, welcome, welcome to the party. Welcome. I think you came uh, last time, and uh, now he's got to play a song about like donuts or bagels or some tacos or something, right? Like, uh, I forget exactly what it is, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, thanks for coming to hanging out. Always appreciate the, appreciate the love. Is this the thing where you have to play like the taco or donut song or something? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. It, and you're involved. Uh, and we'll even bring oh, I you. am? Yeah. Hold on. I got to find you though. I know. Oh, here you are. Boom. You can, you're, you're here. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's fucking all fucked up. Hold on. <laughs> Here, I'll slouch in my seat. No, we can, we can, we can work this out here. Wee! It's... My doctor will be happy. I'm sitting up straight. Oh, good. Mine won't. <laughs> uh, okay, here we go, guys. This is for Zippy Zipper, who just raided us. Thank you so much, Zippy. I appreciate you bringing your peeps over here, and uh, and Robbie. What's up, Robbie? How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Welcome in. In a world where Zippy and Robbie raid the stream, now one man has to play a song about tacos. It's raining tacos from out of the sky. Yes, tacos. No need to ask why. Just open your mouth and close your eyes. It's raining Zippy. It's raining Zippy. Out in the streets. Yes, Zippy. All you can eat, lettuce and shells, cheese and meat. It's raining zippy. Yum, 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 ready, yum. It's like a dream. Yum, 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 ready, yum. More sour cream. It's raining tacos. Because Robbie said so. It's tacos. Because Robbie's the goat. Lettuce and cheese. Bling. Fuck. Okay. It's raining tacos. Oh, oh, sorry. I fucked it all up, guys. Sorry, guys. It's all good. 
And that goes out to Zippy and Robbie, a hot one from Mikey B. Let me tell you how entertaining we are, Robbie. I, I go out to the living room to get my guitar, and Raina's sleeping on the couch with the laptop with the stream going on. And she's like, <laughs> she's so into this. She's like, I've heard these idiots talk before. <laughs> like, I can go take a nap. Yeah, she's like, fuck it. Uh, uh, good to know my follow mod cares. Yes, exactly. Me, me, me. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I, I turned that all the way. Yeah, okay. Hey Apology not accepted. Do it again. <laughs> oh, you want. Here we go. Three, four. It's, it's raining, raining tacos. tacos. From out of the sky, yes, tacos. Okay, let's let's get out of this. We're we're done with that. We we've acknowledged. Uh, I was gonna do. Oh Jesus Christ! Oh no! God oh. damn it! Ah, uh, here comes Gosh. TMZ Mikey. <laughs> TMZ Mikey P. What's up? <laughs> let's rain other foods now. We don't need other food. We don't need food raining from the skies unless it's something. God damn it, Mike! I love. You. Listen, Papa Sweet, I love you too, brother. I'm I'm so I'm so glad that you're here and and you're hanging out and 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 we're all here yeah. together. Um, the last time it rained food from the sky was the story of Moses in the Old Testament. Manna. Manna. Yeah, baby. Well, let's, fuck, let's hear Coming from to the stage. Manna. <laughs> there we go. Now we're talking, bud. <laughs> um. <laughs> So we we I, I know I interrupted you twice now. And That's fine. You, I forgot what we were talking about. So well, we were matter. talking about your favorite impersonation, and uh, you uh -oh. said it, it it varies. It varies. Um, yeah, but yeah, it just depends. Again, it also I kind of going back to the stand up thing. Like I said, like it depends on the audience. So like I know that like when my kids, both of my kids did this, they brought me in for show and tell. And just had me do voices. So I did like family guy voices. <laughs> That's tight. And like ran through like, you know, most of the male characters on Family Guy and like these fourth graders. You know, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I love that. Uh uh, doing Optimus Prime. That also was like a big hit for all of them, you know. Because yeah. they're like, oh my gosh, you know, like uh doing that sort of uh you know, all that sort of stuff. So I don't know. It's uh it, it it's not really a favorite thing. It kind of goes with like what uh, what's going on in the moment and also like being able to sort of augment uh, an impression to be like a normal voice. Like I did this thing recently, like, like we need like an old wizard. And I was like, well, I'll just mix Gandalf and Dumbledore together. <laughs> like, you know, so it's like doing, <clears throat> they were trying to basically say do Gandalf, but like, you can't necessarily, you know, like, so, you know, Ian McKellen, obviously, doing Gandalf in, in here. And so I just sort of did a little bit less British, a little bit deeper of a thing, but sort of kept it right in here. And this was my wide, you know, my wise old wizard voice. Mm. It was sort of whispered and everything was obviously very dramatic. But I mean, it's the jump off point is doing a Ian McKellen impression or mm. whatever. And so, or like, in, or or if I see a breakdown like a description breakdown of of somebody uh depending on what the adjectives are that are used i kind of can then base um <clears throat> like sort of base like i think it's this kind of guy you know like it's this kind of impression it's this 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 seems true for it to be you know like a nick offerman or an ian mckellen or a you know a robert downey jr like quick talking witty blah 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 that's robert downey jr hmm. to me so like sort of putting myself in that headspace and then changing the voice enough to where like maybe even the sort of speech pattern is similar or whatever like so like when i was doing matilda i said who hate like when i was trying to figure out trunchbull's voice it was a mix of two things which was um it was Alan Rickman. It was like his speech pattern hmm. because I was like, who hates kids more than Professor Snape? <laughs> and and so, you know, that that Alan Rickman sort of, oh, wonderful to see you. So excited to be here. That sort of that sort of thing. But then mix it in with uh, Dame Maggie Smith, who plays McGonagall. That that higher like sort of brogue and like the roll of the tongue and so forth. So, Phil, uh, Trunchbull, it was very much, oh, 
Matilda, one more. So wonderful to see you. <laughs> I can't believe you're here in my school. And mm -hmm. like I would like, I was like, I would I would try to take words that I think that she would likely try to like class up or something mm -hmm. like that and try to say them like posh, even though she's probably saying it wrong or something yeah. like that. It's not dissimilar to like Frank from House Party, which was they're like, we want an East Coast tough guy. But in the script, it said dude a lot. And I knew Jesse from Breaking Bad says dude. Yeah. Now, like I've never seen Breaking Bad, but I know he sort of has that rough voice. He says, dude. So no. it's like, I was like, oh, so that's where I said, how's it going, dude? You know, staying yeah. away from the alcohol. So it's like, it's those two things. That's like, that kind of, and also like, I kind of made this realization. I don't think Frank even talks like that because certain lines, I go more New York, certain lines, I go more Jersey, certain lines, I go more Boston. And to me, I think Frank is just, he's putting on that voice to sound like a touch, a tough guy. Whereas like when he goes home, even though you never see this, he's like, well, Franklin, you did it again. Another <laughs> night of saving party goes from drinking alcohol and doing drugs. Well done, Franklin. Good show. Good show. And it's not like, what the fuck though? How yeah. you doing? I'll fucking beat your ass. Yeah. You yeah. Know, like, that sort of thing. After this, actually, uh, I forgot I do have more work. I'm, I'm recording the lines for the Doja Cat DLC that's coming out Ooh, in a couple of months. Ooh, the DLC. And, and she's got a, a yeah, Doja's got me. Moving oh, Dutchman, thank you so much, my friend, for that sub. I appreciate you. You're, you're too kind, my friend. You're too I, kind. That always throws me off whenever I see that. <laughs> no, I know. It's ridiculous. But it, uh, but yeah, like. I'm sorry, that, I'm interrupting that, you again. Hello, I'm just Dutchman. This is this Bentley. is Gandalf. Thank you for all that you do for this channel. And always remember, a moving Dutchman is never late, nor early, but arrives precisely when he means to. XL cox subs again. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Extra large cox coming in, baby. I forgot that I did those. The, uh, like I heard the Van Damme one earlier, and I was like, "Oh right, I forgot about that." Yeah, <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We use that. You're all over the stream, man, and the oh, podcast. Thank you. Yeah, you're... it's nice. Like I, I've said before, it's always nice to like come on here and just like hang out. And, yeah. And, uh, and and chit chat, but it's always kind of cool to see like how you've grown the channel, or you know what, uh, you know, with thing, the, baby. you got the girl, you got the wig goal going on up there, and like you know all these graphics and all this cool stuff. I remember doing it before. It was it was uh, all the graphics and multiple screens and all that sort of stuff. It was just sort of like chitting and chatting. But now, yeah, it's always impressive to me when you're able well, to. Uh, it's it's fucking it, it's definitely expanded, but it, it's it's just it's more fun now. It's more fun for me too. It's just like it's fun to have people hang out and give their stuff. Wait a second, is that where's Chris L. Cox at? I don't see Chris L. Cox. Where is he at? Yeah, where's your cox? Where's Silent L. at? Oh, we had another question from Pepe. I I don't know if Pepe still. Pepe Sylvia. No, Pepe, Pepe Z, I think. It's a Seinfeld joke, anyway. Yeah. Or no, no, sorry, it's a Ollie Sunny in Philadelphia, like where Charlie's got like all like the red yarn. He's like Pepe Sylvia, Pepe Sylvia. Pepe, I don't remember. Is that when he's all like? No, I don't remember, dude. I don't remember any. Oh, there's yeah, there, there's Pepe. There's Pepe. He wants. Or I'm um, they. I, I'm sorry. I don't even know if Pepe's a dude. So I'm just gonna say they. All good. Uh, is it possible to live by uh, uh, live doing stand up comedy? Uh, without being a celebrity, is it possible to get gigs like a musician and have an okay income? Or, or, uh, oh yeah, and and is it very competitive? Very competitive. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I have a I have a friend who, like, you probably don't know who he is, but that's his only job, and he supports his family, his two kids, and his his wife and dog or whatever. Like, he's a he's on a cruise line right now, I think, doing stand up, but like. Other than that, like he just books his own shows. Like even my my buddy Ken uh, Ken Hamlet, who I was like doing all the shows with that we were talking about like near the beginning, he's out of Chicago and he books his own tour. It's his podcast show and like all this stuff, and it's very possible. I mean, it helps if you've got like a successful podcast and like you know uh, are, are more of a you know known in that world. Obviously, like. You know, Bill Burr just sold out fucking, what was it, Fenway Park or something like that? And, like, a baseball stadium? <laughs> and like, you know, like, that's Tight. crazy, man. Yeah. Like, oh, like the only other person that does that is, like, Kevin Hart. Like, right. Tom Segura is out on, like, a huge theater tour and also is doing, like, 
you know, like the half basketball thing. So it's like eight to 12,000 people or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Dalia's getting back out there doing theaters. They're like three and 5,000 people. You think, yeah, I mean, he's coming back. Like people aren't holding a grudge too much, right? No, no not at all. Seems... Like his podcast has been going strong for like the last, you know, year and a half or something like that. And, or two years, whatever it was. And like, you know, um, and also it helps that obviously like while he was being a piece of garbage at the time, like he didn't, technically like do anything wrong to where there could be any charges or anything mm-hmm. so i'm you know so it's like uh but he's completely changed his life he's a dad now and he's like you know in therapy and counseling doing all sorts of stuff like it's entirely po- like even like smaller comedians um as far as audience wise i don't mean that in any other way than just like the numbers wise touring comedy clubs like if you do four shows friday saturday night and you do well, I mean, I've heard uh, for four, like you can make 20, 30 grand for sure doing comedy clubs that are two, 300 seats or whatever. And like, as long as you do well on all four shows, like you can really, you can really do well Um, as an, as a middle, usually uh, there's usually the host and then like the, the middle comedian that like the uh, comic brings with them, like their pal or whatever depending on the size of the venue, depending on the comic, like you could technically probably still do pretty well being a, like a a featured act uh, as well. You know, it's like a couple hundred bucks or whatever, but like the comedian's probably going to fly you there. They're going to put you up, that sort of stuff. So it's like, as long as you've got a decent run of tour dates or whatever, like you could definitely do well. And then if you've got a podcast and you've got like, you're building your fan base and you're selling your merch off of your website and stuff like that, like, like I know Segura, like they'll do like limited shirt runs. They'll do five thousand shirts, and it's like once they're gone, they're gone. Yeah. But they're charging thirty bucks for it, so they're making, you know, whatever that is. Yeah. <laughs> like quarter of a million dollars or something like that on a on a run of like five thousand shirts. Or and it's just like some that. stupid catchphrase from the podcast. It's just, yeah, it's just something that it's like that mom jeans up. or jeans, right? Like it's just something yeah, you know, jeans. just something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> or like, oh man, I was just watching this one the other. Uh, I was just watching the new uh, uh, Two Bears One Cave from Monday, and one of their producers, Zolo, went to a Garth Brooks concert, yes. and they've got this whole thing about like Garth Brooks, like because he 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 seems like he's kind of like dead behind the ice, and so like they've got this whole bit about how like where the bodies buried Garth and stuff like that. <laughs> he gets on the jumbotron holding a sign that says we love garth and the second he sees it he drops it and underneath it it goes where are the bodies g <laughs> and like he got on a jumbotron in front of like eighty thousand people <laughs> and they immediately cut away from that shit where's the bodies <laughs> yeah and like uh and like uh they had like a fake protest going on in front of the the and so someone asked him they're like do you think he knows who you are? He goes, Oh, he definitely knows who he am, who I am. He goes, I can't comment on his Instagram. Like I'm shadow banned from his <laughs> comments. Like, he goes, he goes, if I comment, it doesn't show up. So other he goes, I can see that I've commented, mm. but other people can't see that I've wow. commented. And I'm like, he definitely knows who you are. Yeah. But like, as far as like the level that I'm at, would I quit my day job? Like, the only way that I could do it is if I have a, a mobile rig, which I do. Like, I took it to Bend in case I got a voiceover and I was going to commandeer, like, one of my cousin's closets, like, if I got any orders while I was over there on the weekend. And luckily, I didn't. And, but, like, I could definitely, like, go out and, but then again, there's no draw to see me. Hmm. People don't know who I am. So, it's, like, they could give me a headlining spot, but, like, if 15 or 20 people, if that, show up, like, I'm not going to make any fucking money because, like, you know, the club has to, like... The club makes like usually you make like a door deal. So it's like you get X percentage of the door. And if the bar and if you sell out, then you get a bump. And then like, you know, if the bar does well, you get a bump. And so like you could make even like I said, even in comedy clubs, you know, one night only one show. If you sold it out and like, you know, the bar does well, that sort of thing. Like you can make, you know, I don't know, five to five to ten grand off of like one show potentially yeah. and if you have merch and stuff there you know i'm thinking about i was thinking about this and i would i would have to like is that instead of physically taking merchandise which i know a lot of people want it right there on the night or whatever like tomorrow uh, my buddy uh jared he's taking me i'm gonna go see 
uh, Les and Jake play. And oh, I've never sweet. got to see Les and Jake play, and which uh, is really cool. Where in Portland? Was, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, in Portland. Cool. And uh, and I was thinking, like, what if there was like for merch? What if there was like a QR code that you could scan? Mm -hmm. You buy it there, and then it goes to somewhere else where then it's shipped to you, like you know, from like my storage locker, you know, my merch storage locker or whatever. Right. And I know some people want the shirt on the day, on the night, that sort of thing. But I was just thinking, like, instead of, like, having to take, like, extra suitcases with, like, T-shirts and shit. And I'm like, if you, like, here's a QR code, put in your stuff, you know, everything's paid, mm. stamp, and then you'll get it within, you know, seven days. Like, yeah. the order's put up and, like, it's shipped. Like, I was thinking about merch that way. And because I was thinking about, like, I'm going to, um, I don't, I can't remember if I talked to you about this last time, but, like, uh I'm 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 looking into starting like this tap dance like clothing line hmm. and and um and calling it uh Copacetics Inc. And because the Copacetics were like the guys back in the day or whatever that like like those were the guys you wanted to be, Sammy and like all of those dudes like that, that were like the big headliners or whatever. And and doing stuff and then like going to like dance conventions like following like a dance convention around seeing if i can get a booth figure out like what the vendor stuff is there and like promoting like this sort of kind of like how travis has famous stars and straps and it's like a lifestyle brand but making it for dancers specifically warm-ups sweaters you know hoodies like uh, t-shirts like good like stuff for that but then also if that does well start to transition to more just like outside of dance class clothes as well hmm. and then also set up uh and then also set up a scholarship program not just for like dance conventions of that sort of stuff but also like uh like big goal you know uh uh set up scholarships for people that want to go to creative arts uh theater dance whatever it is like college scholarships and that sort of stuff as yeah. well and, so. and, spe and specifically for like you know underprivileged uh, and and people of color and you know all that like just I I'm basically I have like a huge checklist of crap I'm going through and I'm working with somebody right now to kind of like figure it all out but like yeah that's like my next uh, I, that's going to be one of my next phases is doing this sort of thing and uh, like figuring out like a way to uh, make a few bucks on some some clothes but also give back within the 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 performing arts community and especially to people that I you know that that really need it and that sort of stuff yeah well, that's really nice man that, that's really yeah. fucking cool man um it, it, we we have a couple more questions and great uh, and yeah i do uh, I, we i i do want to talk i do want to talk about that which, which i really think is awesome man I, and that that's the thing about bentley is fucking nobody knows how generous bentley is bentley during the pandemic was just cooking motherfuckers meals and just dropping them off it's like here you go i'm cooking the fucking a bunch of people food and there it is He's, he's yeah, a, I had a map of the city and I had it sectioned out. I was telling and <clears throat> I was telling my my old bosses because I'm setting up a podcast studio for this pizza place that I used to work at. I go, remember how we had the map sectioned off? And he goes, Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I was like, I told him that. I go, I sectioned off Salem Kaiser into like seven different things. And so each day of the week was a different section of the town. And I mm -hmm. figured out where everyone lived. And it was just like that day was like was like those ten houses, and I would do that, and then yeah, it was a lot of lot of work. And then uh, my therapist was like, "Hey, man," because I was like, you know, I was always stressed about it, and like you know, because I did it for like six or seven months. And then wow. she goes, "What if you just didn't do it this month?" And I was like, "Okay." She goes, "Check in with how many people like check in with you," and there was out of the ninety three people. Uh, uh, the 93 deliveries that I had one person when I didn't show up that month in October mm -hmm. was like, Hey, not to like, just be like, where's food. But like, where's the food? You, you okay? Like, yeah, I, you know, <laughs> yeah. Normally I've gotten a message from me, out of 93 people that I had for six months been doing this for. Was that disappointing to you? Uh, it hurt my feelings for mm -hmm. sure. Cause oh. I was like, you know, uh, I was like, you know, I, I just expected a little bit more from all of these folks that I've been like, you know, yeah. uh, uh, hanging out with. And like, you know, because we'd, we'd sit and chat like we'd sit and chat like on the, you know, socially distanced outside or whatever. I yeah. always sit and talk with people for like five or ten minutes. And then it's like I would, you know, uh, it, it was it was kind of like an all day thing. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it was kind of a bummer. I felt I was like, mm -hmm. well, I guess I don't ever need to do this again. <laughs> 
and so yeah. i just yeah i just immediately stopped and now like occasionally it's like i'll cook for friends or like i know like the at the dive bar i go to like when a couple of my favorite bartenders are working so it's like i'll bring them food i'll text mm-hmm. them and be like hey man you in for this tonight or something like that and I'm like yeah come on in hang out and That's right. so i'll go in and you know give them some food and you know then i usually get like you know three or four pbrs and you know hang out for a couple hours and they eat food and we just chat and i was telling i was telling one of the one of them this the other day they're like it's so weird like you just kind of sit and watch tv and like don't really say anything i was like well i don't have normal tv at my house so i'm mainly i'm watching the commercials and then like i was like subsection of that is i'm also because like the tvs are on like like there's it's all just like on uh, um closed captioning or whatever I'm once I see the commercials, I start reading the closed captioning and trying to figure out what kind of voiceover would this commercial be. And then, mm. so it's like I'm practicing, like as I sit here, and they're like, You're a weird guy, I was like, yeah, but but I mean, like, that's you got to get it in when you can, though. I mean, it, it is it is a uh, it is a muscle that you have to work out, and you know, like, fuck it, like, like Raina, my wife, who's a singer, will just sing anywhere, and that's just practice for her. It's like as like a guitarist or a pianist, you can't just be like, I'm, I'm driving in the car. I'm going to start practicing my fucking instrument, you know? So it's like, yeah. you got to sort of get it in when you can. And, and yeah, I broke, uh, I, I was super pissed. I broke uh, my D string on my acoustic uh, goofing around yesterday. You shouldn't have been, you shouldn't have been riding the D so hard. <laughs> That's better than the G, I guess. Oh, I don't know. Well, so, what's this question? <laughs> okay, do you practice those impressions, or are they more a natural thing? Definitely practice. Like the Nick Offerman one was off because I haven't done it in a long time. Mm. So, like, um, if I'm working on a new voice, especially like Jeff Goldblum is one I've been working on for a little bit now. <clears throat> what I do is like I usually. Because my dog and I, we go on late night walks, usually around anywhere from like 11 to 1 in the morning. And uh, and I'll find, a, especially like if it's a new impression that I'm working on, I will find a podcast with them on it. And then I will just repeat everything that they say. Mm-hmm. Because then they're having a natural conversation. Right. They're just talking or whatever. And I remember there was this one time I was doing, I was learning Seth Rogen. And I was like walking my dog and I happened to look over and I see like across the the street or whatever on the other sidewalk, there's someone that had stopped with their dog and was just like watching me walk by because I'm sitting there. All they hear at like, you know, midnight or whatever it was, is Seth Rogen coming down the street or whatever. I'm like, <laughs> like this is absolutely ridiculous. Like, first of all, stupid, but, but <laughs> and like you're out of your mind and like you know like whatever it is that like he's saying on the podcast i just repeat it so they only hear like the seth rogan voice (laughs) having half of a conversation (laughs) and so like but it also has to be like within my range Mm. uh just like any singer uh anything else because it's it is music it is it is a it's own it's 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 a weird way almost of of singing because you are hitting musical notes like uh seth rogan is a little bit deeper than me and he's got sort of like a rougher voice because of you know jazz cigarettes <laughs> and he has he has a cadence he has a thing like where he gets into things and then he'll be like okay <laughs> you know that's totally what it is and like he'll call he'll quiet down and you know and you know that 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 whole thing so it's like listening to them in finding the rhythm of their voice mm. and and then also like I said before, like seeing how they talk. So like, I'm, I'm not working on this, but Rob Lowe, I noticed he talks again. He's a guy that sort of talks out of the side of his mouth. And I found out it's because I forget whatever side that his mouth opens up towards his other ear. He can't, he, he's got almost like a hundred percent hearing loss in the ear. Mm. And my friend, uh, my friend also has something like that. He can't hear out of his right ear. So his mouth, he talks out of the side because it, reverberates behind the good ear and he can almost like hear himself more because he can't hear out of this side so it's like the side of the thing so it's physic physically jeff goldblum is one where uh uh he's always uh he's always on the edge 
of a breakthrough, I believe. Yes, very exciting. And uh, <laughs> dear God, uh, and like then he like he ramps up, but then no, no, yeah, he'll uh, he'll he'll calm it back down. And uh, or like George Lucas is also one where George. <laughs> Yeah, George Lucas, he's got like this sort of kind of Kermit the Froggy voice, you know, like, hi ho, Kermit the Frog here. <laughs> you know, he had, uh, uh, which is really just one step away from Ray Romano. You know, it's like all like, <laughs> it's all like right in that same sort of like behind the nose, sort of like, what, Deborah? And like, um, but, you know, George, uh, George Lucas, you know, I mean, uh, Star Wars and, you know, and he's got this weird little tick where he's got like this weird little laugh. Like he'll be like, you know, so when we were making uh, episode one, you know, Star Wars, <laughs> it was uh, it was very, very hot out there in the Tunisian desert. And <laughs> uh, uh, some people did not like it. I'll tell you that much right now. You know, it's like <laughs> this weird uh, thing. So most impressionists that I know can also sing. Now, whether they would consider themselves a singer is one thing but they can sing because it's it's the same thing you're mm. you're finding notes you're finding rhythm and you're and you're mimicking those things yeah. so um learning how to do an impression is like there but there are some people like there are just some people like i i have to like sometimes it takes me seeing someone else do an impression even if it's bad mm. um for me to go oh that's the thing so like when i saw this dude named ross marquand do brad pitt for the first time i went oh that's how you do it and so like it's like this this body turn thing because brad pitt's always kind of like on a 45 degree angle he's always kind of like hanging out he's got those big lips so it's like i i purse my lips like sort of forward so the air kind of like hits back behind it and then i know he's from like he's from like tennessee or kentucky or something like that so he's sort of got like this easy laid back down so you know like sort of like southern charm sort of thing but the big thing about brad pitt is and he's going to talk to you he's going to point at you but he's also going to ask you a question and then answer it for you yeah of course right and so like it's like that sort of thing of like finding the again finding the rhythm and finding the uh, uh the musicality of it like i'm sure that like reina can probably sing it's why like you know you see it on jimmy fallon or whatever like when a singer comes on they have them sing like other people because mm. they know how to change their voice so they're yeah. doing a, a you know a, a vocal impression or whatever like ariana grande is very good at it um i remember the first time i was her name was jesse and she was uh, at a at our at a, a college here in town and i remember she was a singer and a theater actress and we, we got along and i remember the first time she goes I was like, doing she goes, oh, shit. Oh, mighty, mighty. How dare you? Five subs. You, we hit our goal again, you guys. Oh, my God. You guys are fucking out of your minds, y'all. OK, put a pin in that, because now you're saying that you used to be in theater with Ariana Grande. So put a pin. in. No, 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 no. Oh, I thought that's what you said. But, no, no, no. She's like 15 years younger. 20 oh, years sorry. Younger. Like, Okay, my bad, my bad. But we do, we, we will have to, we, I, I do have to give some love out to Mighty Mighty oh, yeah. here. Oh, yeah, give it. Mighty Mighty, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate the those five gift subs, you guys. And uh, you know what that means? That means I got to put on a fucking wig and talk to Bentley <laughs> about Ariana Grande. So give me one second, you guys. I'm going to go put on my wig and uh, uh, I, I'll be... Who should I talk to them as? Uh, here, talk to them as... Uh, oh, Jesus Christ. What did I do? As Jesse Ventura? Okay. Welcome to, <laughs> welcome to the Conspiracy Hour. I'm your host, Jesse Ventura. Have you guys ever wondered why the third building didn't fall? That's because it wasn't rigged. I'll tell you that right now. Now... The first and second building, clearly demolition experts. And I would know because I was the governor of Minnesota and an ex-Navy SEAL that hunted a predator in the jungle. Oh, man, that new predator. I'm talking to nobody except for the people that are with well, that new predator movie. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. Hey, who out there enjoy the new predator movie? Can you like throw like a thumbs up or say, yeah, there we go. 
Woo! Macho Man Randy Savage coming at you. Yeah, Ric Flair ain't nothing but a punk. And let me tell you something right now. I got no time for his bull jive and his crap. The Macho Man is here to stay here. And let me tell you something right now. This internet thing, the wig, the goal, way to make it happen. Because I want to see this guy in a stupid wig more than I want to drop an elbow on Hulk Hogan. Yeah, let me tell you something right now, Hulkamaniacs and all your crazy followers. There's nothing that the Macho Man won't do in order to come after you. Yeah, and that's a promise. <laughs> yeah hold on let me go put on my cool hat i'll join you all right here i am y'all here i am here's my wig today thank you guys so much for the subs uh this is my ned flanders wig but i i can't hold on let me look at this son of a bitch here how's it look guys it looks like just like normal hair doesn't it hey guys i'm so mod this is so mod. How am I looking? I gotta find my neon yellow one. Zippy, you're still here. Thanks for sticking around, Zip. Looks slightly emo. It does, uh. <laughs> Hello, my honey. Hello, my baby. <laughs> oh, my ragtime gal. <laughs> Oh shit! Watch out, son. That is fucking great. Uh, is that? I, I didn't know you started a uh, a barbershop quartet. That's, that's yeah. Time for uh, ragtime music. <laughs> yeah, it's actually hard to wear headphones, so I'm gonna take it off. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can. They, oh, there we go. Never mind. Hey, there it is. Oh. <laughs> you know, actually has been the hardest thing since the play is losing the 40 pounds that i put on to <laughs> to do it oh you, you you didn't put up 40 pounds for the play you put up 40 pounds because you were hungry motherfucker you stop lying no nah, man i uh <laughs> i started uh i started eating pasta and bread again like, during the play because like i wanted her to be like you know how like f x athletes are like huge yeah still here then yeah. they also have a cut so like she like a, a hammer throwing champion so she's like this ex olympian athlete or whatever and i was like but she eats chocolate cake all the time and so i was like i think it would be i was like i need to be big and in in, in posing but like having seen the video of it or whatever i was like god no wonder you had a hard time breathing like your gut is just huge like <laughs> like such a big i was just like good lord and like i watched myself like move in it and stuff like that you know i was like watching my movements and my dance stuff yeah. and i was just like no wonder you had a hard time like just because like i remember like i see it and i just physically remember how it felt when i was doing it i was like i mean also like i had like so it was it was a t-shirt it was like an undershirt then i had like the sort of like the shoulder strap with a mic pack on the back or whatever mm -hmm. And that like cut into my armpits. And so like my, my arms would start going numb after like five minutes of wearing this thing. And then I would put on the, the, the padded bra and then I would put on a t-shirt and a, like a sweater vest thing. And then I would put on a button down shirt and a tie and then like the jacket. So I'm wearing like six layers and all this great choreography and all the stuff I was going to do with my hands turned into T-Rex choreography and like, and it was the opposite of a Christmas story where I couldn't put my arms above here. So like, like if you see me do stuff, it's all like right in here and like this. Cause it's like, I can't technically move my arms like past like here or whatever. There's a couple times where I figured out how to like with one hand do something or whatever, but yeah, it was crazy to watch and like going to the gym and like, I've lost about half of it. Oh, uh, that's good. Over the summer. Yeah it's wow you know it's way easier to 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 not get winded <laughs> <laughs> it certainly is it's certainly and like i don't easier. like wake up snoring like wake myself up from snoring because like the more <laughs> yeah the more jolly i get the more i like <laughs> you know sleep apnea myself awake or whatever oh that's um, fun that's fun. man i uh i saw a commercial for a, a video game that i was about this time last year i was recording voices for i saw a commercial for it for the first time the other day Ooh. and i was like 
I mean, like, I'm not in the commercial. My voice right. isn't or whatever, but I saw the commercial and I was like, oh, hmm. it's hey. it's ramping up. Hey. Soon I'll be able to buy that game and, uh, and uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, see what they did with like the... 1500 pages that are of crazy stuff that i like recorded or whatever jesus christ 1500 that's a that's a good well one. yeah they they made like a basically i call it a bentley bot they made like an ai hmm. so it was just like all of these weird nonsensical sentences and stuff that doesn't but like you know once all of those things are like plugged into the bentley bot they can just go okay we're gonna put bentley's ai and this type of character so like when they're in a town you see that type of guy or whatever and like you know because they, they there's always like character types you know they just do different you know darker skin different co- color you know different colored clothes whatever but it's still essentially the same thing so like there's bentley bot and you know i was like that's exciting i'm i'm excited to see that and okay. then uh and then yeah the the doji cat thing will be on a couple of months and like I know that she's recorded her lines and I've heard some of them, which is, which is pretty cool. And like, I know that she requested to specifically have beef with my character and that sort of stuff. So the stuff I'm going to record today is like, uh, it's like, it's my character's kind of like fanning out on her a little bit, but then from what I can tell, like that takes a turn and then it becomes an all out war. <laughs> wow. Which makes me giggle. I'm like, that's hilarious. It's gonna be that, that's so cool, man. I, I really dig that Doja really took a took a shining to uh what what's the it's house party, is that what it's called? Yeah, it's called House Party. House Party on Steam, guys. If you guys are interested, uh, there's a game called House Party that's on Steam. And uh Doja Cat is going to be featured in the DLC. And uh yeah. well, and Bentley is one of the one of the more popular characters, I would say, because everybody likes I would Frank. Say probably the most popular because I was the first piece of merchandise mm. that they ever made was my character. Yeah. And uh it was uh it was it was really neat. Like I was just talking with my one of my bosses the other day. He was like, When can you get me those lines? And um they're gonna send me some merch and stuff like that to oh, like they're like, you know, I don't know, hold a contest or like yeah you know do your you know or give it to people you know it's it's weird when because i i i i have a joke about it now that i that i kind of do about you know doing voiceover i've got like a little voiceover chunk and because people always want to know and i'm like well i'm in this game called house party and and you know doja cat wants to join the game and i tried this out on stage and it it worked because i told the story multiple times and again just like how i tell stories i do them for like entertainment obviously like i want it to be an interesting story there's nothing worse than like sitting down with somebody they start telling you a story and you're like fucking dude like spice it up or something like this is bullshit and like yeah, they suck your soul through, yeah through you're their just words. like get to the end of this story but like yeah the the story goes is like you know uh my bosses text me and they go, hey, just so you know, uh, the announcement that we're dropping is that Doja Cat is joining the game. And my response back was, what's a Doja Cat? Is that like an NFT or something? <laughs> and they were like, no, she's a very popular singer. You should look her up. <laughs> and no, I was no. like, she can't be that fucking popular. I've never heard of her. And I go on Instagram, look up Doja Cat. She's got like 25 million followers. Yeah. And <laughs> she's yeah. sitting sideline at the Super Bowl and shit. I was yeah. just like, oh, so that's a Doja Cat. She, uh, and yeah. uh but yeah, they, they did this, um, she and this other uh, gal, this other streamer or something like that, they did like a, a playthrough of House Party. And I guess she's a gamer and, you know, that sort of stuff as well. And so they, they played together and she kept being like, oh, that fucking Frank. Oh, that Frank. Like on the thing. And I was like, oh, that's hilarious. And uh, and so now, yeah, like it's the most street cred I've ever had with like my kids. I was like, hey, do you know who Doja Cat is? Or, yeah. Oh, my God. I was, I was like, she, yeah, we're going to do some, you know, I was trying to get them because like, again, like I'm not, I'm not realizing that she's like got a hit song on the Elvis soundtrack and she's yeah. like, you know, she's at the Grammys and, you know, she's won a Grammy or two and like all this stuff. Like I just go, oh, this is a brand new, I was like, you know, what would be fun? You should, I told my bosses, I was like, you should ask like, and I was like, and I'll fly there and I'm like, I'll record and everything. But like, we should do like a mini documentary, like me and her recording our lines together, like in a studio or whatever. And my boss just texted me back. He goes, oh, you sweet little bird. He goes, that will never happen. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never get that close to her. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, 
Really? You don't think she'd be? He goes, oh, I'm sure she would be into it. She's like, but she's got people. Like, we have to go through people in order to get mm. to her. And they're very protective of her. And I was just yeah. like, oh. Oh, yeah, I guess so, huh? And it's like, I was like, yeah, I guess she's like kind of like a big deal or whatever. <laughs> like, I really enjoyed that song she did on the Elvis soundtrack. It's got, it's kind of like a hip hop 12 bar blues or whatever. Yeah. 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 It's a really cool song. Oh, dude. I, I'm, I, I was, I'm, I'm, no, no, she fucking murders. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I interrupted. Oh, I've gotten, I don't know. I don't even remember no, what I was. The say. Elvis fucking thing, dude. That, that, I, I was talking about TikTok when I first came out. It's over Elvis. It's over the Elvis movie. And like fucking, I posted the thing on TikTok. And everybody came for me just because of the hypocrisy in Hollywood and how they're willing to cancel anybody but this motherfucker who is a serial child molester fucking uh, is good to go, got the pass. That's all. That's all I was trying to point out. Fuck, yeah, man. Well, they're yeah, all coming 20, for me now. Yeah, definitely grooming because, like, he was 24 and Priscilla was 14. There's pictures of them together. Yeah. Oh, that's and not like, it, man. There, there's, like, three or four other girls. Like, he used to travel oh. with, like, three or four girls that he would have, like, fucking, uh, they would kiss and cuddle with. They were, like, 14-year-old and you'd take them on the road. Wow. He he fucking he he uh, a condom broke in some like underage girl and he didn't know what to do so he just dropped her off at the emergency room like, just like <laughs> good luck dude and, you ain't nothing but a hound dog and, and then as he gets older he's still going for young 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 girls and um you know like it, it, nobody likes that idea because the movie paints his legacy out to be like you know. You know, Colonel Tom or whatever the fuck his name was took advantage of him, and and Elvis was a good guy, and he was like the fucking the patron saint for the blacks. You know, like he he if it wasn't for Elvis, the blacks wouldn't have a, a voice in music or something. That's how that's what I came from the movie. And, I've and never the, seen it. Well, the movie's good. It's it's not a bad movie, and and like it is in the long run, it's gonna be great for his legacy. But it's still like uh, I just but also remember Little Richard. <laughs> you know like he was around ray charles he was around you know like dude ray charles i saw a video the other day where he just called he's like elvis is a punk <laughs> he's, that's hilarious oh dude we should play the video only because it's it's that funny it's that oh my god funny. that's amazing oh uh, yeah that's uh but that's the fun stuff or it's like I, uh, I don't have anything against them either like i i don't care like i don't really care about elvis presley but I just yeah. I, I hate when fucking people like this is OK, but that's not, you know, what I mean, like, I, I don't like that For shit. Sure. The hypocrisy of the whole situation just fucking bothers me. So uh, hold on. I'm pulling this For up. Sure. And then we got a message. We got a, another question from Robbie and Robbie. I see your question, buddy. I'm so sorry that fucking we're just over here dicking around. But, you know, this is how yeah. I'll, answer, yeah, I'll answer whatever question. Oh, God damn it. All right. Hold on. We got <laughs> I take back what I said about you being uh, really good at the shit earlier. <laughs> yeah, you. It's fine. You can. That's all right. Here we go, and then boom. There's Bentley. All right. Uh, okay. Here's here's Ray. Uh, he's talking to. Oh, who is he talking to? Um, I can't remember. Uh, now you're now you're cropping out our guest. L look, Robbie, you fucking settle down. All right. You just sit there and mod. Robbie. <laughs> raw 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 Robbie. I uh I've gotten rid of one mod before with my attitude. I'll get rid of you too. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely Lace hated you. <laughs> uh, all right, all right. Here's a uh, here's a uh, uh, here's Ray Charles talking shit. Oh god, damn it. All right. Hold on. Now here's Ray Charles. Talking. Let me put this now. I know what you say. You'd know better than I. Yeah. Let well, me let me ask it differently. How good was Elvis? What Elvis did, he caused a lot of the populace, if you want this, and usually when people say populace, they usually mean white people, uh, to start listening to a lot of music that normally they wouldn't have been listening to. And black people have been going out shaking their behind for, for, for centuries. And what the hell's unusual about <laughs> that shaking their hips and stuff? And that's all Elvis was doing was copying that. And he was doing our kind of music. That's black music. So what the hell am I supposed to get so excited about, man? He's the king and he's the... I, I, a piece of bunk. Sorry. <laughs> don't ask me no more about Elvis. You got me enough trouble. Don't ever, don't ask me about no more Elvis. I got me enough trouble. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. But we uh, we we gotta we we gotta always gotta we always gotta bring up the genius Ray Charles calling Elvis a punk because I mean. Uh, 
again, I don't have anything against Elvis, but I am certainly not somebody who's like, yes, fucking Elvis, and I'm going to go to back yeah. for Elvis, you know? Uh, but, well, but it's like that Eminem line where it's like, I'm the first person since Elvis to do black music so successfully to make myself wealthy or whatever it was. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, yeah, that's really, really funny and uh, good because like, look, I don't disagree. Yeah. You know, it's very, obviously it's very like rhythm and blues gospel inspired and like, you know, straight up stolen yep. some of the time. And like, you know, I mean, his movements and everything, it, yeah. everything he, he took from, black folks but i i think that was necessary you know i think it was necessary for it to happen and how history played out it's like music has always been sort of that thing that's always broken down barriers uh, between race and you know uh religion all that shit though i'm not the first king of controversy i am the worst thing since elvis presley to do black music so selfishly and use it to get myself wealthy there you yeah, go there that's the way I'm white and I play the the F blues. God damn it, Peppy, you're canceled. Fucking Peppy, <laughs> that's it. Fucking Peppy, he he he's bringing it out of me. You're done. Pepe Sylvia, Pepe Sylvia. Pepe Sylvia. Yep. Got to get him out of here. You're done, Pepe. You're done, son. You're white. You're you done. Play. You're fired. Didn't Elvis fired. steal his Remember moves? For that force? was like the big thing that everyone knew about Trump when it was you're fired. You're fired. Like, like yeah. that was like the that like was that was like the big like sort of like cultural. Uh, yeah. thing about him like everyone would do that he fired and uh now and now they're now, raiding his know, house <laughs> now it's like not guilty i don't know why people are saying i'm guilty i'm not guilty there's no charges <laughs> nothing can stick to me i'm for teflon they tried to give me the virus <laughs> he got the virus and he got cured by it oh, i beat the, <laughs> the virus i beat the virus it was huge i was huge here. that's the thing have you seen jb fox doing an impression of uh trump yet yeah it's, it's so, really good dude it's so good. are you gonna watch his mike tyson thing I cannot believe that's Jamie Foxx. He's so fucking big in that thing. I haven't seen it. Is there a thing on? Uh, it's on there... Hulu. It's like this. I think it's it's either a movie or it's going to be like sort of like a, a 10 part or eight parts there. Jamie Foxx is Mike Tyson. He's fucking huge. Like, wow. Looks just like him. He's fucking jacked. And he's Jesus. like doing the impression and doing like. It's got the gap in the teeth and everything. Like it's fucking gnarly. Jamie Foxx is, is a fucking he's the goat, man. He's an incredible, he's an incredibly talented human being. And yeah. again, one of those guys that like because he can play music, plays piano, obviously, you know, when you saw Ray was one of my favorite movies of all time. Like it's great. It still is. And I remember we had it at my movie theater, and that's when we still had film. And so I remember before we sent it back, I cut out a single frame of when they were in the recording studio doing the mess around. Cause that's my favorite song of his is mess mm -hmm. around. And so like when they're like recording it, I cut out one frame and I had it in my wallet forever until like I lost that wallet. Man, but, you, uh, you fucking ruined the film. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just one frame. So it's like you Did cut you out tape, and you it? tape it back together. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's so like old you, school, old school uh, tape in like, you know, back in the day. So what's this question from uh, uh, from Robbie from Rob, Robbie, Rob, 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 Robbie, uh, Rob, Rob, Robbie, Dobby. Uh, if you had to pick one path and it would be enough for a full time job, would you rather do voiceovers or stand up comedy? Oh, God. <laughs> well, I already do voiceovers for a living. So like that's. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, I mean, so, yeah, like, but I, I kind of already. I, my job is only doing voiceover and and hanging out with Mikey. Uh, that's the only thing that uh, that's really the only thing that and having silly hats. But um, <laughs> silly hats. I mean, I would love I would love to do either on a bigger level than I'm doing it right now. Like, I mean, I do voiceover and it does well, and I like I'm you know I'm very very gracious that I don't have to have a normal job like. I go out and get other jobs because I'm bored with how much downtime that I have. Like I go like, well, like last year when I was working at the barbecue place, that was simply because I was bored. I know. Like, I, I was so surprised. You're like, yeah, I work at a barbecue place. I can't do the show anymore right now. I'm working. I'm like, why are you working at a barbecue place? Yeah. Cause I would only work Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah. yeah. Like when you go, basically you, I was like, yeah. Cause you asked me to come on. Uh, but I just I want it and it, and I got to learn like a lot of really cool skills like I, I got to learn like how 
uh his name is troy and like he the way he did his barbecue how to like to to size up the ribs how to like you know trim them the the type of rub that he did the way that he made his mac and cheese uh how to like this fucking huge ass fucking barbecue that was like probably eight feet tall and on like the the side where like you light the fire and do all this stuff that's where like the sausages and like the the chicken quarters and all that sort of stuff would go and then it had these this huge like huge racks probably like six seven feet across four of them that pulled out and that's where we put the ribs and the the pork belly and you know uh anything else and we would like even like the the like the sort of the the trimmed up like the the edges and stuff of the ribs we would still smoke them and then he would put it in with his greens when he would make the greens Mm. so you would still sort of get like that 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 smoky flavor in with the greens as well as like the 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 pork ribs and that sort of stuff and the hush puppies and like the the the, um and what do you call it the uh the the green uh the um the green uh gosh darn it uh okra no it's like they're like little balls we would come up in half and uh and normally you do them with brussels sprouts brussels. and uh normally you do them with bacon but he would deep fry them and then a little mm. salt and pepper and some lemon juice on the out and then you just toss them like wings and boom oh, damn. it was delicious and then like there was a barbecue burger like i learned so much about like just and how to like manage the fire, keep the temperature up, like because it was it was wood burning, it was white oak, and wow. like it was wood burning. So like I got to learn this really really cool skill, and it was just something I loved doing. I did it for like seven eight months, and then it just closed down and ended up not doing it. I'm actually looking into like like I was saying earlier the uh, um the uh, um uh the pizza place that I used to work out. They franchise locations, and over in Bend, which is where I I was, you know, with my cousins and stuff. They don't have one. There's like 10 of them, I think. Hmm. But it's all up and down the I-5, like where I live. Right. And I was like, so I'm I'm talking with, uh, I'm going to talk, have a serious conversation with the owner and be like, what's it take to franchise one of these things? And I might go start a pizza shop over there. <laughs> and, On top uh, of everything else. <laughs> I'm not really doing anything else. Like, uh, I guess whatever. you're right. Like your work day is like, what, like two hours a day, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two, three hours. Like today, it'll be a little bit longer. Yeah. I've actually been having, yeah, it's been more like three or four hours because I've been <sighs> all, all the like the last two weeks, I've been having like these big, like multiple, like 15, 20 page, like e learning things. So yeah. those usually take 90 or more minutes to record, depending on how many paper. Hey, Eddie, Eddie Brown, Brown music. music. Hey, thank you so much. <laughs> Eddie Brown, my man, thank you so much for that sub. I appreciate you putting us over our goal. And and th- by the way, when we go over our wig goal in one stream, that carries over. So next stream we'll have one waiting for us. We're already Heck up to yeah. 41 subs for the month. You guys are so fucking incredible. I love you guys so much. I, I truly, truly appreciate it. And if you guys don't That's know really what's cool. going on, uh, we got... We're doing, we're doing, we got a sub goal this month where we're doing every 10 subs in a stream. I'll put on a new wig. And uh, as you can see, I'm talking to Bentley in my wig. Last time I had to wear an afro and talk to complete strangers. Uh, actually, last time I had to put on an afro wig and talk to Phil Collins' son. So how about. Oh, wow. That's really cool. <laughs> it was cool. Uh, but uh, yeah, Nick. Uh, y- so I I I I I'll look like you got your Joan Jet wig on now though. Yeah, yeah. This one's not as ridiculous as the other ones, but and then if we hit a hundred subs, so we're already up to forty-one subs, you guys. So way to go. Wow. We're fucking murder and shit. If we hit a hundred subs, I'll do boobs. The, my song boobs, which is which is embarrassing even to talk Tear about to chart. my friends. Like it's like, oh, you you put out a new song. He's like, what is it? Uh, it's called Boobs. Um, yeah, I saw that. What's that all about? <laughs> it's uh, it's all about boobs. It's all about consent. All right. uh, yes, I, please. I, I, still, I, I gotta listen to it. Uh, maybe maybe I'll do a performance for you, and you can actually see the song, and it'll be a good time. Uh, Eddie Brown, everybody, go follow Eddie Brown music. And again, Eddie Brown, thank you so much. Um, and and then so if we hit the hundred subs, and 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 then. Um, I'll do the live IRL performance of boobs, and then I'll also fucking wax my legs on stream. God damn it! That I don't know why I decided that was good. Well, Robbie has requested. I couldn't do that right now. I've got a chunk missing out of one of them. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> no, I got nasty hairy legs, so they are. It's I... gonna hurt. It's gonna bleed. Um, okay, so how about this? Put a pin in it. 
a, a Bentley. Give me one second. Robbie has requested that I play boobs. So uh, we're going to do nice. boobs. And uh, and then uh, we got another question about stand-up, too, from Pepe that, that I cool. missed earlier. And we'll come back and do that. I don't even know what we were talking about beforehand. Do you remember what we were talking oh, about? Franchising Bar a pizza location. That's right. Yeah, because you work like three hours a day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I love that pizza location. Like I, I helped them open like two stores like back in my early 20s. And I love the pizza and all that sort of stuff. And I just find it. I was like, I don't know. I, I'm finding it like because over there, I was like, you know, we could probably do like three or four stores within about five years. No problem as long as they're like doing well or whatever. And then it's like, I would just get like, like sort of like a district manager or something, you know, like, and it would just be a residual income thing for me rather than like, I would sort of become the district manager and I would just check in and like, and I wouldn't. So like, I was like five years to do something like that and build something that I truly believe in, I think is great. And then, you know, kind of just have some, you know, have some, some, Again, some some uh, what do, what do they call it? The the money that comes in um, residuals or well residual but oh passive income passive have income. like a passive yeah. income type of scenario or whatever after like, but I like I like the pizza and I like doing that sort of stuff and it gives me because I was like we make the dough fresh every day we cut all the vegetables and the cheese and everything like fresh every single day and it like it was always something that I really really enjoyed and so like yeah cooking is cool man. It's a, yeah. it's, it's a, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful skill, man. Like, and it's so nice, like, like, you know, feeding people is like a really, it feels really good. It feels really good to feed, cook and feed someone and, and they liked it. And, you know, it's just, there's just, it's beautiful. It's a, we're, we're staying alive. Look at these patterns, bro. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go over. It. It. Let's do boobs and we'll come back with our guest Bentley and we'll talk more about, yeah. uh, we'll answer Pepe's question about stand up. Uh, and I, was it, was it do that? Then you're going to be sure you are next stand up show, but I guess you want it. I don't know what that means. Pepe. I'm sorry. We got lost in translation there, my friend, but, uh, I love it. Uh, been in Charleston, South Carolina all week at work just from home. What a fun city to visit. Food was all hell. Yeah. Get it. Charleston. Let's go. All right. So since we got a request for boobs and Bentley don't know what boobs is. No, you're good, bro. You're good. You're good. I, I just, I, I, don't, I don't understand what you're asking or telling me. I'm sorry. I want to laugh with you, Pepe. I want to laugh with you, my friend. All right, let's do boobs and uh, we'll be our B. Uh, yeah. And then Bentley's gone. All right. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Okay, here we go. Let's go. And, and everybody, make sure you're out there fucking streaming this song. Make sure you're running that shit up, all right? Someone bought a, a someone bought a T-shirt the other day. Did anybody buy a T-shirt off of my my merch store? I'd really like to thank you, but I don't know who did. So, if anybody bought a T-shirt in chat the other day or whatever, let me know so I can thank you personally. But someone bought a T-shirt. Now I'm gonna be the next stand. -up. Okay, I got you. Uh, you, uh, you should be. Uh, Pepe, if you're thinking about being a stand-up. If that's what you're saying, I, I completely encourage you to go out and do it. I don't know what this, the, the stand-up scene is in Sweden, but fucking get at it, son. All right, let's do some boobs. Brush. May I have a guess for your breath? Don't you acquiesce. I want a real yes. If you don't want to bang, let's stay up just to hang. I want you into this so I can give you sexy bliss. And if you change your mind, we can still have a really good time. All I want to do is touch your boobs. If that's right with you. And consent is what I do before I touch. A cold shower, then let's talk about girl power. I just want to make you happy with those boobs. You may slap me. I just want this love connection. This is deeper than in my erection. If you reject my male gaze, I'll look away and feel ashamed. Oh. All I want to do is touch your boobs If that's right with you Consent is what I do before I touch 
touch, touch your boobs. All I wanna do is touch your boobs. If that's right with you, consent is what I do. Before I touch, touch your boobs. If yes means yes. And no means now. Then, baby, let me finger blast your soul. All I wanna do is touch your boobs. If that's right with you, consent is what I do before I touch, touch your boobs. All I wanna do is touch your boobs. That's right with you The scent is what I do Before I touch, touch your feet May I have a yes To grab the breath And there it is, guys. Uh, boobs. <laughs> there it is. Everybody go stream that shit. Make sure that you're running up those numbers. Daddy needs a new candy bar because that's about as much money as I'm going to get out of it. Like, oh, like fuck. 25 that was cents. really cool. I, I love I love, Shong, uh, love songs that involve a shuffle. <laughs> like, like oh, so many God. of my songs are like based around a shuffle that it's like I have to find different ways to like incorporate it like either with like oh mighty mighty foot pattern or thank you for those biddies no i'm sorry man no i i i like i like shuffles too man and that was actually a really hard song for me to like figure out because i because it has that you know like it has that sort of thing i wanted to be like a driving six eight triplety yeah and i yeah well you know what it's called i don't (laughs) (laughs) yeah but you can play it better than me so it's all good aren't we quite a pair um mighty mighty thank you so much for that 401 biddies let me get you some love here i don't think we've done it yet hold on mighty mighty oh no oh we can't hear it we're gonna do it again Well, we will do the mighty mighty though. Mighty mighty. Um, hold on, we're gonna do it again because that's bullshit. I could just do it. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> you... Hello, mighty mighty. This is Jean Claude Van Damme, and I want to say thank you for the biddies. I don't know what that means, but I like the purple image on the screen. Thank you for hanging out, and as always. <laughs> there you go mighty mighty you got a live read today for your biddies I, and thank you for those subs earlier you know how much i love you uh, i appreciate you being here and uh and who, yeah and baby yoda's here um yeah oh snap the live mm that's right Raina. well good morning Raina. good morning you woke up oh so she finally woke up from her couch now <laughs> <laughs> oh, Eddie Brown. Yeah, right, right. I, I go out to <laughs> Eddie Brown. Oh my god. Eddie Brown just ordered a camo ball cap off of the store, you guys. Let's give yeah. let's give Eddie some love. Thank you, Eddie, for, for supporting the show. Again, everybody, go 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 follow Eddie. Make sure you're getting some Eddie in your life. Getting some and and, and some edibles. Get some Eddie's Eddie and Brown some music. Eddie Brown music coming straight. I'm Bentley you. Michaels, and I approve of Eddie Brown music and him buying merchandise. <laughs> Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, get it, son. Okay, everybody, go get some Eddie Brown. Um, he, he's uh, we I think I'm him. getting a. I think I'm getting a couple of house party hats. I'll definitely send you one if they give me multiples. You send me. You send me a house party hat, and I'll send you a we SDG hat. How about that? How about? But it's only still have, contingent. I still have it, even though my dog chewed on it. I oh God damn it! it. Your dog chewed my pants. <laughs> But I appreciate yeah. you still having my patch. Look it's, at that. Uh, it's right here on my computer. I see it every single day. Oh, look at us. We're... Yeah, just a couple, 
Just a couple guys hanging out, just having couple, a great time. A couple of middle aged assholes talking. <laughs> well, one of us is middle aged. I'm thirty. I'm thirty nine. Are you, I always forget that you're so close to being aged. So for whatever reason, I always think you're like 10 years behind me. Yeah, I know. It's what everyone thinks, but I'm, I'm fucking here. I'm here. Yeah. I'm up here. I'm, I'm going to be dead soon, too. So yeah, well, it's all good. <laughs> you distract me with gray art stream. Uh, so, ugh, fuck, what were we talking about? God damn. Pepe wanted to ask a question or something. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pepe had another question about stand up. I don't know if Pepe is trying to be a stand up or, 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 or what the deal is, but uh, Pepe is really into asking some questions about stand up. So, how far can you go uh, as a stand up comedian with a joke? Can you joke about a. Dis- okay. Can you joke about a disaster that happened recently or other big events? Uh, know the limits here in. Uh, know the limits here in Sweden, but I think Hall's different uh, between countries. What is allowed to joke about? Yeah, I, okay. I, I get. I think I get what you're talking about, and I think yeah. you get it too, right, uh, Bentley? Um, so, yeah. so he's talking about making like offhanded jokes, like like how sure. people would make jokes about 9/11 right after 9/11 happened, and and that was yeah. you know there were people doing that, and especially New York comedians. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, especially like when you're in that such like New York, such like a like a tight city or whatever it's like they kind of needed to do it i was just listening to i think it was mark normand he was talking about Mm -hmm. that uh a couple weeks ago on a podcast where he was like yeah people like we needed to do uh and and that's why it was or maybe it was sam marill because they were talking about because he did like a rooftop special Mm -hmm. and during the COVID thing like where they would just but he's in new york so the backdrop is like all the fucking great ass huge tall buildings in fucking new york but he's like on a rooftop with like a guitar amp and a microphone, like, you know, just talking or whatever. Right. And, uh, but like, as far as, as far as that sort of stuff goes, like if you go to any open mic, you will always see somebody and probably multiple somebody's try to tackle something that's in the news, try to tackle something that's controversial and they just suck at it. And like it's not funny, and then they're just like, "Oh, no, oh, too far," and like blah blah, and like you're like, "No, you just suck at talking about." That. <laughs> yeah, you're bad at that. Was a bad joke, you know? Like, yeah, like there's so many people that try to like, for example, like Louis C.K. He's got a lot of stuff like saying the N word or saying he opens up a special saying the F slur, yeah, yelling yeah, it into a microphone. There, there's there's that bit where he talks about like that sort of thing but or even Chappelle sometimes how Chappelle tackles certain things like it's it really depends on your ability to make something funny because anything can be funny it just it needs to be the right way of doing it like years ago I wouldn't have been able to do that joke about the colorblind thing and you know to my black friend on stage and being like oh well that makes more sense that you know that you're not a leprechaun or a smurf it makes sense that you're black or whatever like yeah i never in a million years would have thought of that i told him one time too i did a show and he brought up tap dancing and i i used the f slur i go well that got that got me called this a lot in high school mm. tap dancing. Cause like somebody in the audience was like, do you really tap dance? So I like did a little step and like did the splits and pop back up and everyone like cheered. And I was just like, yeah, that got me called this a lot in high school though. And everyone was like, everyone was laughing, but I think contextually, like it makes sense. Cause I wasn't calling somebody that I was saying something that happened to me. Mm. Um, but yeah, you just need to know how to make it funny. Cause I think in general, almost anything can be funny you just have to find the right avenue you know like bill burr is very good at that about like digging himself a hole bringing something up and people are like oh boy and then he just climbs out of the hole and you're like oh my god that's so hilarious i never would have thought of it that way mm-hmm. and like um you know i always like when people like don't like bill or whatever and they're like, the stuff he talks about, I was like, you realize he has a wife, right? And he's got a daughter. And you realize also, like, his wife is black. Like, yeah. you think she would just put up with it because he's a, and he's an actual asshole? I was like, there's no fucking way. Well, well, it's because she's a white supremacist, too. 
<laughs> well, exactly. And that's what we don't talk about. Um, <laughs> she doesn't do lotion. <laughs> doesn't do lotion. That, that, that bit about him, too. he's like when he was dating her or whatever. And he was like, why are you, why are you putting all this lotion? He goes, so I don't get ashy. He goes, never heard of that. And she goes, and she like scraped his arm or whatever. And she goes, see those lines? He goes, holy shit, I'm ashy. <laughs> like, <laughs> what did you say? It was like, it was like chalk dust or something. Yeah, chalk <laughs> dust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, man. But like, like, he's, he's so good at those sorts of things. So it's like, I don't talk about a lot of topical things, really. I don't really talk about, hey, so you guys hear this in the news that this is happening? Like, I don't, I don't tend to go after, I don't make fun of stuff that's happened even in the past. Like, I wouldn't have, like, an Elvis joke, or I wouldn't have, like, a, you know, I don't know, like, a Trump joke or a Bill Clinton joke, or, like, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to think of, like, stuff. Like, I, I don't have those kinds of things unless it just happens to be me riffing in the moment or whatever i don't tend to go after that stuff because my position on comedy is that like i always want to be the bad guy i always want to be the idiot mm -hmm. i want to be the stupid person in the room i want to be the person that's like oh oh right you know like i've got this i've got this joke about how like i i thought as a kid from uh uh you know from uh discovering the wonderful world of uh pleasuring oneself that like I gave myself AIDS from doing that <laughs> because that was right. The, when I discovered, when I discovered, a uh, uh, you know, a uh, self pleasure was exactly the same time that magic Johnson contracted the HIV virus. And I was sure that I had given myself HIV <laughs> from jerking off. And like, <laughs> like I, you know, like if I'm ever going to bring stuff up or whatever, it's, it, it'll be in like that manner. Yeah. Uh, you know, or like the church stuff, you know, like there's a little social commentary in there or whatever, you know, like growing up Christian. I was like, but I was like, you know, who, who in here grew up in the church who grew up Christian or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I was like, you know, sex ed, that didn't exist. It was don't do it unless you're married. Otherwise you go to hell. <laughs> and then they turned the page and we talked about nothing else for like, you know, and I was like, so if there is little commentary or something like that, it's very quick, but it usually ends up having to do with me being an idiot. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, and uh, like later on in that, that HIV joke, I call it the HIV joke. I've got like this, I've got this thing. I was like, where I sat my parents down. I was like, hi, thank you all for coming. Um, so your baby boy, your number one son, he's got HIV. And I know that's not going to look great on the Christmas card, but, and, <laughs> and my dad just like looked at me and he goes, yeah, how? And I was like, well, okay. In all honesty, so I learned, like, if you start rubbing against the bed, he goes, like, first of all, you're doing your own laundry from now on. Second of all, that's not how it happens, stupid. <laughs> and I transfer into this whole other thing where, like, that's pretty much that thing's over. And then I go, I was like, oh, which was a relief off of my mind because I had a birthday party coming up. And I did want to tell my friends, like, guys, we have to cancel it because I got HIV. But here's the deal. Uh, uh, you know, after 1030, we got to quiet down a little bit because my parents have to get up to work and don't rub your dick on my bed and you won't get AIDS. All right, let's have a good time. Cake and ice cream. Like, you know, like, right. if I'm going to tackle something like that, it's got to be within the context and I never like just do normal jokes. It's Hello, I'm very Dutchman. Oh, sorry. This oh. is Ganda. Oh, sorry. I, I had to. Hi. Thank you, Ray. No, but uh, thank you. Thank you. And yeah. moving Dutchman, HIV also from China. <laughs> so, so I've heard. So I've heard. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I, I. Again, like, I don't think anything is, like, off. You just have to find the, the right way. Like, my buddy's doing this joke right now about, like, suicide. And I, you, the second you say that, you're everyone's like, boo, boo. like, everyone's asshole tightens, like, a little bit or whatever. Mm. But, like, the way that he does it, I laugh my fucking balls off every time I fucking watch him do this joke. And to, like, watch the audience kind of go, like, yeah. eh, to just, like, dying laughing, you know, like, I'm just, like, Oh, just you wait for it, you little fucks. Like, like I'm, I was like, I know how this joke ends. Like, I was like, but you just wait for it. You wait for it, you little turds. <laughs> and then, like, 
he just he starts going he starts ramping it up and like everyone starts relaxing it's like that's the other big thing too is that like you know you bring up a topic you bring up something and you just hear the audience go like and you're like shut the fuck up yeah i haven't even started yet <laughs> like you know like uh like like trust me to be the the funny one here like mm. and that's another big thing with with comedy uh stand up i think as well as like you know as the performer like you have to almost immediately let the audience know that they're going to be okay like you've got the reins i'll take it from here you guys just chill out and relax and you can tell you can tell as i'm sure you can with like any musician anything you can tell when someone walks on stage and within about five to ten seconds of them starting you're like we're gonna be fine yeah and the audience can too mm -hmm. like you know like they're just human beings watching you so like i do this i do this bit every single time i go on stage at an open mic at a show i do this bit every single time because what is the first thing a stand-up does when he goes on stage uh, greets the or crowd. he he or she yeah greets the crowd yeah. says hi whatever they hi. walk to the microphone oh excuse me okay they walk to the microphone pull the mic out whatever and, and do it some people don't you know take the mic out but yeah that's exactly it buddy hackett had this um had this theory he goes i don't do that he goes because you and everyone else does that i walk in front of the mic stand I walk over to this side of the audience. I wave to them. Look up in the balcony if there's one. Hi, how you doing? Walk over to the other side. Hi, how you doing? How's the walk to the center? Hi, how you doing? And then I turn around and I go behind the microphone and everyone goes with me. Hmm. And I liked that. So I was like, I need my version of that. So what's on stage? A mic stand and a comedy stool always, right? So I walk on stage. I don't even look at the audience. I'm just sideways. Don't even acknowledge the audience. Walk across the stage, grab, and I usually put uh, I put my phone on the comedy stool. On the comedy stool. Move the stool. Turn around. Still haven't acknowledged the audience. Grab the mic stand. Like right up here, like where the mic's attached. And if it's one of the circular mic stands, I do it really slow, and I drag it across the stage. You just hear like... And like, so like now... As an audience member, you've seen me walk on stage, not acknowledge you, and I go across this way. And so your head go, you go, and like you see me do something with that. And then I grab the mic stand, and like your head goes like this. And like I clear out like this little space for me to work in. And then I do this bit where I take the mic microphone out of the stand and I purposely wrap the microphone like around the thing, but I make it look like I'm trying to like, you know give myself some slack, mm. wrap it around the stand, turn around, still haven't acknowledged the audience, and the microphone stand falls. And I'm like, still haven't looked at the audience. You know, kick the mic stand up to my hand, grab it, un unwrap it, clear some, you know, clear the cord, and the audience is just like, for 90 seconds now, <laughs> has been watching me. I haven't said shit to them. But they watch me go, they watch me go, now I've got this little trouble here. Uh oh. And then like I fixed it. And then like once I got the cord ready, I like walk back to the center and kind of like and I'm like kind of breathing in the mic. I'm like, oh, okay, you can do this. Okay, you can do this. And then I like look up to the audience and put a smile on my face. I go, nailed it. How you guys doing? <laughs> and like people have asked me, like other comedians, they're like, does that ever get a laugh? I go, it's not supposed to. Hmm. It's 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 resetting the audience because they have watched me now for like a minute and a half do a bunch of stuff and i haven't said anything but hopefully i've like and then i walk back to the center and finally acknowledge them it focuses them and i've never had it like some nights it's worked better than others but like and that's just like depending on the audience or whatever but i do it every single time and i told my cousins this when they saw me do it it was a little bit different and like, but I was like, why do you like, did you actually do that? Or like knowing you, like you probably planned that. I was like, yeah, it's planned. But like, it's so that the audience is focusing rather than I walk on stage and I take the mic out of the side. I'm like, hey guys, how's it going tonight? I never once asked that. I never asked, how's it going tonight? Everyone fucking fuck them. I don't give a shit. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't, I don't care how it's going. It's about to get funnier. That's how it's going. Yeah. And like, that's something that I, I really, really 
like doing because like i said like i've had come like what's the last and i was like it doesn't really it's not supposed to it's so i'm not like everyone else hmm. you know yeah. and it, and it's 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 something that engages the audience and they don't realize they're being engaged like i love magic i love card magic i love and so it's that idea of the distraction the thing so now like once i i i, I I've, I've set myself up to like look, look like i'm stressed out and i'm kind of like and like i failed with the mic stand all that shit and whatever and like and now it's like all right and then i hit him with this thing like my my opening thing like after i'm like nailed it <laughs> so i'm sure as you can tell by the way i'm dressed i'm a stepdad and like so like <laughs> and like like i've already got them kind of like on my side or whatever and so then i hit him with that and then they start laughing it's like that's like the release valve like oh he knows what he's doing yeah. and like, you know, that sort of stuff. And like, you know, I do this whole bit about my kids out the gate and like them fighting as, you know, younger kids and that sort of stuff. And like, you know, how being a step parent, like standing behind their five foot one mom, I felt like a, a dancer in an old school puff daddy video, just like, yeah, <laughs> like dancing. I'm like, yeah, listen to what she's saying and that sort of stuff. <laughs> and so it's like, I immediately just hit him with this barrage of all this crazy shit. And then I just start talking about like, you know, voiceover stuff and like, you know, different things that I've done. And then that allows me to do some voices. Mm. I've got this bit about how like um, in junior high, I was friends with the liar kid. And I always try to find things where I was like, who in here was friends with the liar kid? Does anybody have the liar kid? <laughs> and, and, you know, like, and people are like, oh my God, I'm like, for those of you who aren't, you know, who don't know what I'm talking about, like the liar kid was the kid in school that no matter what you did, he'd already done it and he'd done it better than you. And like, you know, and then like, oh, and so I try to find these ideas and these things from my childhood that like hopefully are relatable to everyone because I don't just want to write like a a normal joke. Like I tell these stories that I write jokes throughout, mm. but I never want it to be something like, well, I've got a joke about. I was like, well, cool that we had the same life. Like because like my buddy Dash, who has the 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 suicide hotline bit or whatever. If I go after him, he and I talk about a lot of the same stuff because we both grew up religious. We both grew up like in a lot of different, you know, playing sports and different stuff. And so, like, you know, I always try to piggyback on like what he was talking about, you know, depending like I my jokes come out differently because like, you know, if if I go before him or whatever or, or after him, rather, if I go before him, then he can just deal with whatever. Like he doesn't. But he is so fucking funny. And he's one of those guys that like who's a little bit different like we're similar enough like we've done a lot of shows together and you know our styles are similar enough that like we work really really well together mm. but i could never just be like a joke writer guy where it's like here's a funny idea how do i make it weird it's like if i have that i have to think of like a way to like work it into the story of something that happened and i've done enough stupid shit in my life that like i should be I like the doja cat thing like I've been, like I said, like I've been doing that on, on stage recently and it kills every, like it does really, really well every time. Cause people can't believe that. Like, I didn't know who Doja Cat. Oh, when I did it in the room in Portland, <laughs> this is the best. It was the first time I did it. And, uh, and, and I, and, and you hear it on my recording, but I go like, I was like, what's a Doja Cat? Is that like an NFT? And you hear one of, one of the women go like from the table, she goes, Oh, white boy doesn't know. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, no, I didn't. And it's a hundred percent like exactly that. <laughs> and like, and, and I was like, I was like, and like, I'm not, you know, around my kids who are like hipping me to new music anymore. Like I'm still listening to fucking, you know, Pennywise and shit from 1996. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. yeah. Anyway, I, I hope that answered his question. <laughs> I think it did. I think it did. He said that he's just going to quit. He's already quitting. He wants to know how uh, has the audience ever trolled you or hecklers? How do you, how do you do? Uh, we can go take it a step further? Okay, so he's asking if they ever heckle you, and then I'm going to take it a step further and ask how you handle it. Uh, yeah, I've had audiences that were very loud, uh, especially drunk people and that sort of stuff. Uh, the thing that I have found is that like your instinct is to want to be like shut the fuck up like and like you know like when i was younger in comedy i would do that and i would get very aggressive the only problem is is that like i'm like mr potato head like i have angry eyebrows and it doesn't take much for if i get serious and i start to look at you and then this voice comes out people think i'm way more pissed than i actually am and that sort of stuff like i've been in like 
heated discussions with people and they're like whoa you need to relax i was like i'm not that upset and they're like you seem pissed i'm like i'm starting to get pissed now that you're fucking talking to me about it like that you know like yeah. um so like i've found honestly like there's only so much you can do sometimes like people are just drunk and like they just they have zero sensor and you see it all the time with comedians like on tiktok and like instagram and shit like that like but the best thing that i have found is to just like kind of like let them do it a little bit and like kind of like let them dig themselves a hole and then hopefully the audience turns on them and the audience is on your side and the audience kind of like self polices hmm. um because like i could be like i'm like what was that? You know, and, and sometimes they don't even mean to heckle. They're just like, so like, for example, that show in Portland, like I said, they were very chatty, but like at no point did I ever think that those women were heckling me at any point. Mm. They like, that's just like, you know, black, uh, black, uh, black people in a movie theater talking like that. There's yeah. a reason there's a joke yeah. because they have to say their opinion. <laughs> oh, don't go in there. Like, fucking, don't go, you know, whatever it is, yeah. you know, like, and like, I knew that they weren't heckling me and sometimes they would say funny shit and i would just like and i would respond back with something and then i go back into my thing and then they were down to listen again or whatever but the people that you can kind of tell there's there's different types of hecklers there's people that are drunk that don't fucking know any better that are just like that are kind of doing like that thing of like they're saying shit out loud they probably don't realize how fucking loud they're being and they don't realize that like they're being disruptive then there are the people that feel as though that they should be part of the show for some fucking reason and just want to run their fucking mouth, whether they're drunk or they're sober. I've had both. And those are the folks that I kind of like give them enough rope so they hopefully kind of hang themselves. And the audience is like, usually if you give them a little bit of rope, someone in the audience will be like, shut the fuck up. And I'm like, hey, look, the audience is turning on you, man. You probably should be quiet. And then there's the people that just don't give a fuck and those are the people that like you kind of like have to kick out hmm. like like i've i've waited while someone got kicked out and i was and then like i the second that they're like you know leaving i like i i go into the mic i'm like this isn't going against my time right <laughs> like i make like like i make a joke out yeah. of it so like everyone's you know or my favorite thing is like if, if we were kind of being combative i was like look you're gonna have to go like they're gonna kick you out and here comes the security and here comes you know and then they're like still chirping and i just wait and then it's like I'll kind of like reset, you know, kind of like fix my shirt or something like that. And then I'm like <sighs> look up at the audience and be like, sorry, kids. Mom and dad had a little fight, you know, like, <laughs> like make like a yeah. like like make like a fucking joke. And I'm like, and then if I've already done the stepdad joke, which is my first wonder what usually, I'll be like, sorry, your stepdad and your mom were fighting. My bad. <laughs> and like <laughs> And like, yeah, you, you try to make the best out of a bad situation because if you go too hard at them and you're a fucking asshole to them, <laughs> the audience is going to turn on you and then you're fucked. Like, yeah, depending on how much time you have uh, to do. And like as of re recently, I've been doing like 15 to 20 minutes and that can be a long time. <laughs> if like if you're if you get fucked over in the first five minutes, you got 15 minutes left and they don't like you. They're not going to laugh at your shit. There's going to be someone in the audience. This is like next joke. Fuck it. And you're just like, all right. Fucking Jesus Christ. Next like, fuck me. They're like, or this is the one. Hey, when are you going to say something funny? Uh you know, and then that's usually, you know, there's the there's always these hacky responses of like, I don't go to your work and nah. kick the dick out of your mouth. Like, yeah. why do you got to come to mine and like talk right. or whatever it is? And like, I just try to like, uh, I just try to be almost like as nice as possible and let them kind of like, because sometimes somebody just needs to get it out mm. and then they're fine the rest of the show yeah. or whatever. Like, I'll be like, yeah. So what's going on? Uh huh what's happening like you know and like and 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 sometimes it's as simple as you didn't see it because it's black you know it's pitch black and then like the lights are on you so you're kind of like you know your eyes haven't quite adjusted enough or whatever and their friend comes in late or you don't see that the waitress is talking to them or whatever it is sometimes they just say something and they don't mean it to be that loud and and then you're like what was that like i always try to clarify what was that Sorry, I just heard you. I just want to make sure that you're good. Like, and you and you try to make it so you're on their side. I just want to make sure you're good. Hmm. All right, cool. Or oh, you're ordering? No problem. Yeah. Can I 
will you order me will you order me some wings and have them bring them to the stage perfect it's on your tab <laughs> and then like and then like go back into your shit or whatever because like sometimes you don't realize like what's happening but usually like uh and sometimes you kind of got to ignore it too like there's been people that have been chirping like off to the side and they're just talking they're having their own great fucking drunk conversation mm -hmm. yeah. and i will just ignore them for an entire set it sucks because every instinct in me wants to just go bash their fucking head in with the microphone but like i'm the like if i do that like everyone else in here is enjoying this i'm getting good laughs you know there's there's a hundred people here in this tiny little club everyone's having a great time except for these two little fucking chuckleheads over here like just ignore them and if it gets too bad again like either address it or someone in the audience usually addresses it for you yeah 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 man uh, the, the there is the, there's some just so fucking disrespectful like i i don't understand why people pay like to go to out for for an evening to a comedy club just to like go and and, and just live because usually own. there's parking and there's also usually a two drink minimum right. so it's like just to just from getting out of your car and sitting down you've spent forty dollars or something like that if like if you're on a date or something like that like right and 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 like you want to chat like i rem yeah and the also like you have to really get used to this in comedy clubs is like when the check drops mm. because there's a bunch of waiter waiters and waitresses walking around dropping checks and people are like looking through their fucking shit and they're like you know getting their cards out so it's like at the 45 minute mark if you're doing like an hour set in a club you just got to have some bullshit. I remember watching this really amazing comedian named Rich Voss. Yeah. And, right. and he just stopped. He like finished a joke and he goes, ah, check drop time. And he just sat down on the stool and was like, can I get a coffee? <laughs> and like, they brought him a coffee on stage. He goes, thanks. And he just like waited for like, you know, people to pay. And like, he just spent like seven minutes just kind of like bullshit and talking, did a little crowd work, talk to the audience or whatever. Hey, what are you guys doing here tonight? You know? And then, you know, the last 10 to 15 minutes he ramped it back up went into his act went into his big closer but he knew i mean he's been doing it for 30 fucking years but like i thought it was a very educational thing for me mm. to like see that like okay he knows that this is when this happens so he's got a little thing perform you know like ready for it or whatever mm. and like you know as you get more experience in those sorts of things like you you start to find uh those things and also if this person is really looking into doing stand up, they should definitely just find an open mic. And if you're not comfortable going up yet, just go watch it for a couple of weeks. Yeah. And you will see that there are people there that are legitimately funny. And then there are people there that fucking suck donkey <laughs> balls. And it's, it's kind of like an 80, 20 rule, 20%, Within the 20%, there's really good people and pretty, you know, pretty decent people. But like 80%, you're just like, dude, if they have the guts to get up there, I should definitely try this because they fucking suck. <laughs> and I still think that when I like when I went back, I was like, God, I'm not I haven't done this in a while. Like after the Matilda play and like I had I knew I had all the shows coming up. I was like, I, I haven't done this in a while. And like I went to an open mic and I was like. Oh, it's still the same. It's still the same. These people still fucking suck. I was like, fuck this. And like my friend was running. He goes, you want up? I was like, yeah, fucking put me up. And so like I did old material and then did a little crowd work or whatever. He goes, coolest compliment I got. He was just like, he goes, still got it, man. He goes, you haven't lost it. He goes, like, I've heard those, like a lot of that before, obviously. But like, you wouldn't know that you hadn't done stand up in five months. Wow. Like. I was like, I was like, thanks, dude. And then like I just start going back like every Wednesday after my tap class, I would teach and then I would go and like work on new material and work on stuff. And yeah, I'm working on this bit right now about like, you know, like ghost hunters that show ghost hunters. I was like, what if they, they got like a different show? It's almost kind of like a like a house like HGTV type of thing to do where it's like uh ghost relocators. It's like and so it's like I get to like do a bunch of voices. So I'm doing the announcer voice. And then like I've got like the ghost. I was like, but the ghost is so annoyed at his like his new tenant in the house that he wants a different house to haunt. Cause he guys he goes, Tim sucks. He comes home, he makes a microwave dinner, watches 90 minutes of TV, goes to bed. And no matter what I do, 
He doesn't like, I was like, I had two old people that I haunted the fuck out of for 57 years. And then they both decided to hold hands and die on me one night. <laughs> and I was like, and he goes, let me tell you, meet them afterwards. I was like, hey, it's been me hunting your house the whole time. They were not happy. <laughs> and like, and like, I've got this whole bit about like a ghost. Re he goes, I'm haunting this new young couple. They've got a baby. I'm like, I'm knocking shit off counters, breaking plates. It's been amazing. <laughs> and it cuts to the couple and they're like, we are terrified. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I said that to my friend and he goes, dude, this is a sketch. Yeah. I was like, for anybody else, this is a sketch you should film. But for me, the guy who does all the voices, I was like, it's the only way I know how to write. I also wrote it out like a script or whatever, you know, but like he goes, this is a sketch. Just film it. I was like, no, I'll show you it's not. And so like I did part of it like on his show and he goes, he goes, I forget that you're not like normal standups that I know. Like, I forget that you're Mr. Story weird stuff. And like, you know, because like, well, how like, do you... the... go ahead, go ahead. No, I was going to ask you, how how do you write? Are you are you somebody who writes it out all like in front of the audience? You said you you wrote some of that. Are you somebody who like writes the whole bit out on the computer or a notebook or, or are you usually no? usually like I have an idea and I'll like write down bullet points. Mm. I kind of go like, here's the beginning. Here's the end. Talk about some of the stuff in between. And then I just go on stage and just start talking because like. I know how to tell story. I know how to, I know how to do, and like I just sort of naturally know how to be funny in conversation. So like I never try to make it f seem like I'm trying to do jokes. It's always just like I would just want to be like talking yeah. to them, and I think the audiences feel that as well. Like I'm just up there having a conversation with them, mm -hmm. and just like it's a one-sided conversation a little bit most of the time, mm -hmm. but it's still just me, like your friend telling you a story at your party or something like that. Like, yeah. that's how I want to come across with people. And uh, the times that I write stuff out fully, like that, like that ghost bit or whatever, I have such a fucking hard time doing it on stage because I don't remember all of it. Whereas, like, naturally... I would just know like where to kind of like add a tag or add a joke or add like some uh, funny or a way of delivering it. Whereas when it's fully like, I feel as though I have to like, of course I wrote it. So it's like, I have to do it in that way. There's certain verbiage that I've already written out, like mm -hmm. that I felt was the best way to do it. Now I just have to fucking remember it. Mm -hmm. And so those, those bits take longer for me to do, but I don't do that a lot. Like my joke notebook my joke notebook like if you looked at it you'd be like this guy's a comedian like what the fuck is this shit like like it'd be it's like uh backup dancer puff daddy videos retired now now owns dance studio right and then and then i just go okay i'll go on stage and talk about that but i record what i was going to say is i I've, I've recorded every single set that i've done audio wise except for two my third set because like that was before the iphone didn't like kick you out of the recording program if you got a phone call hmm. and then just two weeks ago i didn't realize i was going up like because i got there like after class or whatever and my friend saw me and a comedian got done and he goes all right come to the stage bentley michaels like oh shit and so like i just walked up and i just started talking i did all this crowd work i did some of the the religious singing stuff but mm -hmm. then i just started doing all this crowd work and there was like a you know there was like a drunk lady in the front that i was fucking with and like doing all this shit and then afterwards like i did like 10 minutes and just fucking did great and then and then I'm like, all right, that's all I got. You know, thanks very much. I've been Bentley Michaels. Put the mic back in the stand. Thanks. Go to the back of the room, pull my phone out of my back pocket and look at it. And I go, fuck, I didn't hit record. And like, there was some like really good, like crowd work things that I was like, and I don't remember them. So like that. And, and so like the, the thing is like, I record every single set and then I listen to, so like when I was over in Bend and like my cousin and her husband and her kids, like they all went to bed. I was like, I'm just going to be outside, you know, I'm going to drink some beers and like, you know, just hang out. And she lives out in the middle of nowhere. It's beautiful and stars everywhere and shit. I listened to my 16 minute set that I just done that night. I listened to it for two and a half hours. Jesus. I would just hit and because because yeah. I don't write stuff down, 
the first two times I listened to it, I was just like, just enjoy it. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, my therapist, like, she's like, you need to give yourself credit when you do good. So when you listen to the, like, for, so for example, that listen to it and genuinely hear people laughing and tell yourself you did a good job. Cause you probably don't do that very often. I was like, no, never. And so like, and so like I did that. And then for the next two hours, I listened to it and I was just listening to it going like, okay, you could have done this here. Here's a tag that you could have done. Here's the thing. And I will rework it in my head to where I can then listen to it and say, and say the stuff along with it and then do my changes on top of what's being said. And like, and because I don't write anything down Mm -hmm. and that comes from the ADHD dyslexia shit. Like I like, I won't, I just won't fucking remember it. Mm. Like I did like all of my lines and all of my songs for, for the play over 500 times in my living room. And I would still be looking at my script during the show before my scenes. I knew I knew them, but like, it was like, my brain was just like fucking, you know, like I have a hard time memorizing things, but like I can improv like a motherfucker. And, and then it's just like, I listen to the audio. Maybe you're similar. It's like, I can learn something way easier listening to stuff or watching video, go on, go on YouTube Mm -hmm. and I'll watch like a five minute video on how to cook like a certain type of dish. And I can just go and grab all the spices and I can just make it right. But like, give me fucking instructions. And I'm like, (laughs) this is going to be burnt. Dude, I'm gonna burn the I'm gonna burn dude, the fuck out of this for real. We had like you know those like Blue Apron those those like meal yeah. orders you could do, do like they come with these like fucking instructions. And so my wife would yeah. be like, "Cook up the Blue Apron dinner tonight." And I'm like, and I'm just sitting there like going fucking nuts because then you have like the boys jumping around being crazy. The TV's on. Yeah. Fucking, she's trying to talk to me. I'm fucking over here. I probably have like a podcast on in my ear, and I'm trying yeah. to read this fucking thing. And it doesn't make any sense. And by the end of it, I'm just like i'm just gonna make this into what that picture shows so that's fine yeah. <laughs> it's like i'm done with yeah. this because i'm i can't sit here and fucking keep reading it over and over and it's not even comprehending it's not even sinking in like i'm just yeah. i can't i can't no. i usually like if i'm gonna make a dish that i haven't made before it's like i will try to find about five videos again it's like it's always like a multiple thing for me mm. and like i'll find two by like like big producers or something like, you know, like something from like a food channel, like Bon Appetit or something mm-hmm. like that. Somebody making it like, you know, and then I'll like watch two of those. Um, and, and like, I'll watch like, you know, if it's like a specific like food channel or whatever, then it's like, I'll, I'll, I'll go and like, I'll find like, like a, a binging with Babish or like, you know, uh, you know, something, something where it's like a YouTube cook or something mm-hmm. making their version of it. And then I try to find a, the final version I try to find is someone basically like, filming their grandmother making that thing and they usually have like the old school less is more approach and so it's like i've watched like four or five videos and then my brain just kind of goes doop 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 and i was like and i can make it now (laughs) now i can do this but but or or like you said because like they they also have like pictures like on those instructions Mm because i've had some friends like i've made them made the dinner with and they're like you're not following the instructions i was like i know how to cook (laughs) like it's potatoes it's steak it's like flour like so like this is the picture exactly what you said this is the picture this is the end result so <laughs> let me guess uh, i pan sear the chicken and then i like i like uh, uh i i pan sear the 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 potato wedges or whatever the fuck like and then i lightly toss in the vinaigrette in a salad in a separate bowl or something like that I'm like okay well never mind you know what you're doing but yeah, it's the exact same shit, man. And so yeah, with comedy or even music for for I remember being in music school and like I I you know, my first twelve And there goes Bentley. It's very true, Robbie. I'm very visual, I'm very audio stricken like stricken. Yeah, that's probably the best word for it. Be- I didn't know. Play. Look, Bentley doesn't even know he's frozen yet. <laughs> he's still going. And like, and then like it was like, 
he's not gonna know until like he comes back and we're like i don't know oh you, oh you froze. you're frozen buddy you're frozen oh no you're 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 you were frozen i was just like no you were frozen no you're frozen you're fucking frozen let it go <laughs> let, let it go, go. Um. The okay. So we're gonna do one. <laughs> I, I just kept talking because I saw you freeze. I was like, ah, his video stream will catch up. <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. Um. Uh. Since since things are falling apart quickly here on the on the video and stuff, why don't we try one more question and then we'll let. And we've been going for three hours. We yeah. could probably wrap it up. <laughs> yeah, I'm fucking starving. I gotta pee, and this wig is hurting me. So, um, do you do any collabs with other standups? <laughs> yeah. collabs with other stamps i mean i guess yes because like like i said my buddy was in from chicago so like i was i did like uh three shows with him mm -hmm. or two shows one of them got canceled but like i yeah and then like yeah i mean that, honestly like that's how you get on shows it's no different than music it's like you know this band and they need someone else on the show or whatever it's no different for stand-up it's like knowing the promoter knowing the whomever and like you know like if your friend knows that you're good in a pinch like there's been times like when my buddy from chicago he came to town and i walked in to see a show and i saw him on the phone and he looked stressed out and then like i just walked by him and i just kind of waved and walked by him and then like i got a beer or whatever and he came up to me and goes okay so the guy that i'm with me is drunk at some fucking bar in portland so you're on stage in 10 minutes uh you're gonna do 15 minutes and, the, and I go, okay. And then, <laughs> you know, I even paid to get in. So, like, <laughs> like fucking, I walk in and I went up to the bartender. Can I get a refund? <laughs> I just did stuff. Oh, shit. Uh well that that that's a that's a that's a great way to to end this since things are falling apart here. Um Bentley, if you can hear us, I appreciate you coming on the show and we did hear your your refund. That was funny. Um not in common is that not come thing in US. Lovely lace. <laughs> What's up lovely? Good to see you. All right, Bentley. Uh, I'm gonna let you go, buddy. I'm sorry that it ended like this, but uh, I definitely uh, appreciate you. Oh, there he is. He's back. Are you back? No. Yeah, I'm here. He's here, Bentley. <laughs> well, I appreciate that lovely lace, Bentley. Thank you again for coming on the show. I had a good time chatting with you, catching up. Of course. We gotta do it again, of course. Yeah. Because it was you a lot know. Of fun uh bentley bentley's a staple of this show i mean he's all over the show even when he's not here so <laughs> fuck it we gotta get in here all right man uh Evan, yeah i'm finishing up some music sweet i'm finishing up some music uh I've, i'm finishing like uh uh i'm starting to starting to demo like some of those like country tunes i was talking to you about a couple mm -hmm. you know like a couple months ago or whatever yeah. and uh and just like the acoustic versions or whatever and uh and working on some some other stuff as well and uh yeah i was gonna play something but yeah like i said i broke a string last night like practicing right and uh, it was something stupid where i was like i played it really good and i was like where, and then i did like the extra strum where i was like good night i was like took it down and like and it just and it goes, Bleh. and i was like oh fucker What's, what the music to uh if you guys want to go make sure you guys are following bentley i put his uh his, he has a he has a podcast he has several podcasts and he has fucking his instagram he also does voiceover work so if you ever need anything from bentley definitely hit him up and uh i appreciate it man uh thank you again and uh we you're will, very welcome we thank will, you for having me of course we'll talk soon everybody put your hands together for the man the myth the legend bentley michael let's go all right man peace out Gosh. That was Bentley Michaels, yeah. That was Bentley, yeah. That was Bentley, yeah. That was Bentley Michaels. All right, I gotta pee, you guys. I gotta pee really bad. And uh, my fucking, this thing is hurting my head. All right, so Monday we will be back.
with uh, Melvin Ch Chesler. Fuck, what's his name? Let me get his name because I don't want to be a dick here. So give me a second. Uh, Melvin, Melvin Crispel the third. Melvin is a Sony artist who is a gospel artist who is a, he's fantastic. He's a fucking murderer, uh, singer. Like I kind of want to play a little bit of him now. And I think he has a song with, um, Kirk Franklin, Melvin Crispel the third. Let's just, let's just see some Melvin, shall we? Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so. Y'all ready? I know y'all know this one. Let's do it. All of my life, I never known you to fail. Yeah, <laughs> you got criminals on your show now? Always. Uh, murder and shit. Hell.